in a calf in a guitar. This year we don't make a calf. Ladies and gentlemen, mainly ladies, welcome to the Smokers Club. Thank you for being here. Before we get started, we don't want to have a moment of silence for Nails Homie passed away today. Brand Jubian, rest in peace. Let's give him 10 seconds, please. Word up, rest in power, rest in power. Thank you ladies for coming, man. I'm super excited about this episode. I think it's great that it's an all-female cast and it's our third episode. <laughs> I'm coughing already. Thank you guys for coming. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. We got Mariah Poetry in the studio with us, which is a beautiful thing. The rest of you guys are in remotely. Hopefully everybody's safe and COVID free. I'm going to let McGlock start off with the night because there's a lot of people and we got a lot of questions. We're going to get into a lot of different things tonight. It's going to be super exciting. And Century is at the rehearsal factory, so I think she's going to hit us with a live performance in a little bit. So that'll be pretty yeah. dope, too. Ooh. Yeah. Yes, sir. Things happening tonight. No, I, we, we have a packed show. Like, then we have, like, Damn, we got Mimi Cannabis, we got the Lettuce Lady, you know, we, you said already, we got, we got Mariah, we got Sentry, we got Sailor Genesis, but first, I want to start off with our Bud of the Week, you know, right here, we, last week, we talked about the Pharaoh Farms and their reserve, um, out of, well, this delivery service, is out of Bradford, right here, we got some Hulk OG, right here. I don't know if y'all see it. I don't know if y'all familiar with it, but like, it's crazy. It's like, you know, you got your serial number. You can get that freaking off Weed Maps, Bradford Delivery Service, uh, Mad Dab. So I'm going to pass out some dab, some pass nut dab. Um, I ain't pass out. <laughs> See, this is why I need to be in Niagara. He's having an old thing. What? I knew we should have drove. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, Bryce, next bud we're going. Jeez. We're out here handing out buds with steer on the okay. Real talk, it's crazy. I'm coming. He's handing out buds with serial numbers on. Jeez, <laughs> Batman. He's playing Mega Man. Look at Matrix buds. <laughs> what? Zero one zero one zero one zero one zero one. All right. <laughs> Just give weed maps a call and or and tell them to throw us a delivery. Uh, you already called. Facts. Me. Facts. <laughs> Facts. This I'm on that. I'm on that. No, Mariah <laughs> Nelson, you are a vibe right now. No, it's part of you. I, Mar Mariah, she's a vibe. Every time I see her take a pull, I'm like. Oh, because I'm in the factory. I can't smoke in here. So I'm oh. Like, oh. <laughs> oh, shit. You're going to have to take a smoke break for this show. No, I'll tell you, I lit up half of one that she has in her hand still. So I'm okay. Here you go, go. Like, here you go. Oh. Virtual. <laughs> Thank you. Mar Mariah's going to get lit tonight. I told so you, before I'm before, before I perform, out. I'm going to go take a one, two, You're pull. But for now, I'm enjoying You're watching cool. Mariah. Bro. No, I hear you. <laughs> You're we're smoking. Going that's, your next joint. That's, that's, that's the next joint. You're the next joint, we're all going to smoke. This one's the for you. Hello. Everybody, Can I start with all of you guys pick a split pull for me, yeah? Okay, my first question. My first question is for Century. And I, the, my, my reason for it is because you're an incredible singer, and we've never even got a chance to have a conversation. So I like to talk about music because that's like my favorite thing in the world. Um, we never met on Big Caesar. Hi, Big Caesar. I'm the Sentry. other the other brother at the end is McGlock. The stone Hi, McGlock. white guy in the middle is Yardy. Hi, Yardy. You already spoke to Mariah. Yeah, I love Nails you. is on the other end on on the ones and twos. Okay. My question for you is: What do you like more, rapping or singing? I'm coming out with it right away. I know. You try to make me choose between my twins. Don't yeah. <laughs> it could be the vibe you're on today. It'll change tomorrow, you know? Okay, so um I can't give you a definite, but I would put rapping above singing just because that's what taught me how to write. Like 
I've always been able to sing and emulate singers, mm -hmm. but it's the rapping, like the Machiavelli and like, I don't know, just, I don't know. I used to like, um, I can't remember shit right now. My split was real tough, but like nineties hip hop, like rap groups though, like real mm -hmm. hardcore rap groups, not like the NWAs and things everybody knows, like, Helter's not what the fuck are the skeleton? I don't know, bro. My head is lost, but I will text you with that information. <laughs> but I appreciate hip hop over singing because I think it takes more thought because singing I can cheat, I can carry notes, I can I feel that I feel create that. more emotion. Whereas with rap, I have to use my words to like really convey some shit to you. You know what I mean? I got you. I got you. Spencer. No, I, um, to follow up, um, yeah, no, crazy, like, you, with singing, rapping, I mean, I understand that you have a new single video that's out, uh, called, uh, Six Page, that's correct, yeah. if I'm not correct, um, <laughs> that whole song, it literally, it sounds like, you know, like a memoir to the streets or a love letter to the streets, I know you said on uh, on the track, but what really propelled you to to make that track? You know, like to to go out. Like what what pushed you to to put out that vibe? You know. Um. So, unfortunately, what happened is uh, October thirteenth, two thousand nineteen, at Vana I suffered some like gunshot wounds. You know, and. I still have like a piece in my back, but it's like they can't take it out. So they're just like, oh, we'll leave it there. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Oh so I have a little friend, but um, that wasn't the first song that I wrote and recorded before when I got back to the studio. That was just like, that was the one that like meant the most to me because it reminds me of um, Aaliyah's four page letter. And then we're obviously the six. And then it's like, I'm, on a hood level, it's like I'm paging you, you know what I mean? Right. So, yeah, so it's a six page. It isn't like, it isn't <coughs> like you can go to any city in the world and get paged, you know what I mean? This is a Detroit page, like, you know what I mean? This is a West Side page. Like, I don't know, I've lived a very different life, I guess. <laughs> like, mm. then I look, but um, yeah, so it's a six page, like I'm paging you and this is, this is how you're gonna come through my city. Right. That's dope. Nice, nice. I feel that. You hear it on the track. Like that's the that's the thing. You feel you feel the emotion that's left on there. So, so thank you for that. Like, you guys should really check out the newest video that just dropped yesterday. With Price um, the boss. Life, yeah, with life for the dawn and all like pricey, my brother. Come say hi. See? <laughs> uh. Oh, yeah, you know I mean, this is my brother, aka management, in here. But I, I'm over here making him proud because I set all this up on myself. <laughs> That's what's up. That's what's but yeah, up. that one love track I think is like definitely on like a different level as well. So, I mean, as much as people say, "Oh, I rap and I sing," like I do everything. If you give me the opportunity, give me country, whatever, test the girl. I mm -hmm. just want to bring what's happened in my life and what goes on in my head to the world because I feel everybody should have the capability of doing that just as you guys are reaching out to the world here and using that as your medium to like connect that's my medium you know right feel that at the end of the day it's like you're, you're still an artist you know like yeah. different ways you know yeah I, I and that. I think in 2020 an artist is a very wide spectrum like you know whereas 100 years ago you paint or you play an instrument or you sculpt like you know what I mean where now it's like just to create anything especially because we've been on lockdown people become so creative with like 30 seconds and what they can do with like a five minute video and like you know what I mean whether it's music whether it's media whether it's like some biography type stuff it seems as though like this time has created something amazing and it's done it to me, which is why there is six page because I like really wasn't supposed to be in the studio or nothing, but like we got it done right before complete lockdown. And yeah, I see like a lot of people on here today, especially, I think they'll know exactly what I'm saying. Like 
there's such amazing minds here tonight that I'm excited. That you yeah, man. Nice. That's, 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 I want to ask you um, a question. Do you feel like you get treated different being a rapper or singing music? Yes, of course. For sure. For sure. Because I feel like when I sing, people feel more obligated to, like, I don't know, respect me or treat me like a lady, a.k.a. Mm -hmm. Whereas when I rap or when I start rapping, they're, like, super surprised that I'm not on some, like, launching street. Or if, like, they want me to rap, they want me to be, like, sexier. Oh, be sexier. Be sexier. And I'm like, uh, I don't even know how to be this sexy. And you're lucky you got it. <laughs> you're asking for more? So, oh, right? Like, you could try, like, and then, oh, do this. Like, uh, anyway, that's another conversation. But, yes, I do get treated far differently. But it also depends on the rap like I, I've realized if I sing it's like oh my god you're amazing da, da, da. I just want to work with you if I rap it's like either you're treating me like a piece of meat or it's like oh my god this chick is super gangster and that's it you know thank you I appreciate that answer I... as a as a rapper like as an MC for years and years <laughs> I've been singing for a long time too not as long as I've been rapping but I've been singing for a long time yeah and like I find that my opinion on on females and rap music personally i love i love women that rap i think it's like the dopest shit ever right personally yeah i love but i don't i agree with you that like it's not it's it's too much of a box to be like oh you're you're a woman you rap oh you have to be sexy or you you know what i mean like it's too much of a box. As a rapper, you should be able to rap or talk about whatever it is that you want to talk about. You know what I mean? And it just shouldn't matter if you're in a dress or a pair of track pants. You still, it, it, should, it should be about the music just like as if you were a dude. You know what I mean? There's no different, you know? Yeah. So, like me, I listen to Rhapsody all the time. She's like one of my favorite rappers in the world, period. And not even just like because she's a woman. She's just one of my favorite rappers, period. And I don't, I think it's cool that you're you're trying to go against that green because there needs to be more of that in my opinion. I like yeah, definitely agree, man. I like because, the folks. Yeah. Honestly, I love I like the fact that you said that because I feel like um not enough men and not only just not enough men, but just the like and I'm not even gonna say color, right? I'm gonna say men of like urban ethnicity. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like people who've been like through actual life. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And <laughs> didn't have anything fed to them and like grew up with families who've come from different places in the world. Like for a man like you to say something like that, it means a lot, right? Because um even though we women are super self-empowered and whatever, the industry is very much driven by you guys. Absolutely. So if if the industry is only showing us, or like people like you guys who give people like artists like us opportunities. The Cardi B's not, I love Cardi B, okay? Like, but not everybody can be Cardi B. And even Cardi knows that, right? Yeah. If we had more people like you and more people like you guys who obviously believe everything on this show, like, you know, there needs to be some type of equality. For us to know that makes it easy for easier for us to do it. I hear that. Because it's, it, it's like, if you have such a dream, you know what I mean? You have your limits on which you're going to sell yourself to, which goes outside the boundaries of who you are. But if you can only get revenue or recognition through a negative view, it's like when you're a kid, you know, sometimes bad attention is better than no attention. Exactly. And unfortunately, a lot of us grow up in households where we know that. And like that shit carries on into our adulthood. And as women, that shit is super fucking prevalent because we've always been trying to prove ourselves, right? Always trying to be equal with the dudes in hip hop or whatever we're doing. So, like I said, big up to what you're doing and the things that you're saying because as a woman, it makes it easier for me to be that woman you respect. That's what's up. That's what's up. Which leads me to a question for all the ladies, all of you together. Do you feel... This is, this is a touchy one, but I want to know. I always want to know what women think, you know? Do you feel that there is 
a definitive line between being empowered and then just being slack. You know what I mean? Yep. I think Celeste Genesis should answer this question. Oh. Can you speak up if anyone can hear me? I yes, we can hear you. Maybe talk a little louder though. Oh, okay. Can you hear me now? Oh, yeah. So you're saying uh, a difference between empowerment and being slack, but you mean slack as in like lazy? <coughs> I did. I didn't. It's my fault. I was coughing. I, I was very quiet. She's saying she's asking if you mean slack by lazy. <coughs> No, I mean, is there a line between being empowered and being free and just being a straight up hoe? You should have oh. said that. Um, you know what I mean? I guess, but when you call somebody a hoe, you're, you're, you're judging them already. So I feel like we're spiritual beings having an experience. <laughs> and maybe the word hoe isn't necessarily how I would carry myself. But if someone wants to do that, I mean, we're all here having a different experience. So, I mean, I hear that. I, I, I don't like I don't like calling it a hoe for, yeah, for the record. Yeah. That's why I said slack. I just <laughs> I just <laughs> I just, <laughs> I, just didn't, I just didn't I didn't know how to explain it when you asked me what I meant. So, yeah. not every black person is Jamaican smokers. <laughs> tell them, tell them, tell them. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Well, you know, most women, most women want to be empowered by their person that's in their life and other women. I mean, I think that when we empower each other as women, it's it's endless. It's this, it, you know, it's OK when you guys do it. But hey, yeah. when we do it between us. You guys don't have a fucking chance. <laughs> <laughs> Not a one blood clot one. <laughs> Just saying. No, Joe, no, let us leave you quiet. But I will say that it's rare. So when it happens, it's Xanadu, but it's rare. Joe, we do need more of that. Yeah, women need to. If you empowered women need to empower other women because if we don't, it's not going to go anywhere. You know that's that's the the whole key to it. I mean, yeah, it's great. Like, I mean, when my husband empowers me too, I know he's proud of me. I know he's, you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. But when we get when we have a women that are really really empowering empowering each other, it's it's totally different. You know what? I, I really do agree with that. And and the thing is, like, what you're saying, that partnership, like, whoever your partner is, best friend, whatever, yeah. you know what I mean? I would like a husband, I think in 2020, that is rare. But for you as somebody who, like, grew up in a generation where, like, you could find that partner because there wasn't all these distractions, right? Well, yeah, and this is actually my second partner. So my first partner passed away. So now my second partner is 10 years younger than me. So uh, good for you. I'm great. That's so bad for clapping. And then What's you're good? like, you no, that reminds me of my mom. Me. My no, that was horrible. <laughs> no, Mimi, that was bullshit. No, it's good. No, that was bullshit. I was cheering that you had two husbands. Then you crushed me. And then you brought me back. That was not nice. No, one's, no, this is my second, my second marriage. And I did marry someone younger than me. So, yes. There's um, hope for all of us. Yeah, keeps I me young. Her. Keeps me young. Um, I had a I had a baby uh, quite late in life, so um, I was almost forty. So oh, congratulations! Yeah. So you know, it's it's yeah. So and now she's like, you know, nineteen, and I, I'm doing all kinds of stuff with her. So it's like it's yeah, it's been really it's it's really great. Because I mean, I'm 57. So it's like, I'm from, a, you know, I, I'm on the edge of being like, I'm on the early boomer, but I am still a boomer. So, but um, I've used cannabis for 42 years. So um, I'm a cool boomer. <laughs> that and that's why we can still party. 
I'm a cool <laughs> boomer. Don't worry, Mimi. Anytime you're around the way, you know what I mean? With 10 people, we got this. Come chill. Exactly. And that's what it has time. to be. You guys, listen, you guys are called the Smokers Club, but she is the president. Yeah. yeah like, I've been like, t- you I've been guys, all, all of you week. combined can't even. I've been saying it all week. I've been saying it all week. Which I guess that'll lead us. I know that McGlock has questions about, uh, about you know, all kinds of stuff that Mimi's into and let, let us ladies into as well. I, like you guys are into like the other end of stuff. Like we 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 like to smoke, but you guys are into like advocates. Right? You guys are like the real advocates, you know. Yeah, like, y'all, so y'all are in it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, y'all are hands up, yeah. you know, fighting for it, like like that. So. I mean, Fighting the good fight, yo. Yeah. Like, this I medicine, mean, and you may as well, you know, advocate for other people to have that ability as well, right? Like it, it to me, it only made sense to go in that direction. Although I have to say that the advocacy, you know, it can be a bit of a rough, rough road. Um, I, it's uh, it's it's not an easy thing to do, and sometimes you do feel like retreating into just enjoying it and not thinking about how vital it is across the board. Like how, it, how it benefits so many and, you know, they're just kind of using it as a, as a means of profit. Like they're not, not, actually, not actually looking at how it could really benefit the world. And like, no, I, I hear that. You know. I joke. Um, the stigma is still alive and well, you know, um, especially for people from my generation. And that's what my whole voice is about is to, is to try to get people my age to relearn this. You know, that's that's the whole gist of this, you know. Um, but yeah, the, the stigma is still alive and well. So, yeah, it can, advocacy can be can be hard. And the, that, that's actually one of the, the questions that I, that I wanted to, to lead into is um, why is it that you think that with legalized or sorry, let me rephrase that um, with the legalization, um, there being less stigma behind we, why did it take the legalization? Why, why didn't the sorry to put it older folks who were you know very on edge about it doing the research like would you say that they were just like closed-minded people that didn't want to believe it and just kind of took the word of the government well i think a lot of it has to do with um just the whole it being illegal you know um i think that once you know, a a person my age has been waiting for this for, for a long time, you know, way longer than you guys. Sorry, but (laughs) we've been waiting for this for a long time. Um, So, you know, this is really, really big for us, you know? Um, But I mean, it's, there's still a lot of um, generation, generational gaps, I guess. Um, And I think that there's an opportunity to kind of use cannabis and bring generations together you know I think that you know now that it is legal because let's face it a lot of people my age they're like you know oh okay I wouldn't use it when it wasn't but now that it's legal okay I'm willing to give it a try you know what I mean like that's that's just the way it is you know um so I think that joining the two, you know, different generations together is the key, is, is definitely the key to breaking the stigma. Um, you know, I mean, it, um, it gives us a chance to really learn from our elders and something to bond over, because I think that, like you it, it mentioned, really is, there being it a, really does. A gap, you know, and now maybe we can fill that gap through, through some good smoke. Exactly. <laughs> so, no, I, I hear that, I hear that. So, um, talk, talk hey, to wait. Uh, Can I ask both Joe and Mimi a question real quick? Yeah. Yeah. Just because like, okay. Okay. Actually it's two questions. So the first part, the first question is this, what is it like to be in an industry where not only is it male driven, 
but it seems as though males drive it towards more equitable profits rather than healthy products because uh yeah okay that's that's part of my second question but anyway what is it just me or is that a fact and then how does it affect you guys like do men run the industry and are they just looking for money and is it women that are really driving the holistic front because that's how i feel i i don't think so i mean I'd i'm still asking like... everybody in general yes but joe and mimi because joe do you want to take this one first I, I think it can really feel that way because of the way that cannabis has grown in the legal industry, right? So, like, it was more like that were really opened up by legalization. And those avenues were topicals and, like, bath products and stuff like that, things that were of greater interest to women. So, you can see, like, like, their kind of taking that avenue while the men dominate this idea of like bud and concentrates and stuff like that but yes because that's what I thought is like they more focus on like shatter and stuff whereas like like my female industrial women who involve cannabis in their life they go for like herbal teas they go for like oils they go for rubs they go for like even aromatherapy with weed like you know what I mean like that's my question. And then my second question is this. Um, as a person who suffers from mental health if issues, but also has an allergy to anything, any psychotic, right? What, what do you recommend, like, just to calm a motherfucker down? <laughs> I like, I just oil. really want to fucking know. Like, that's it. I'll be a thousand percent. You need an maybe oil. Other people would like to know, but I need to know. Yeah. You need an oil that's balanced, that has equal amounts of THC and CBD so that you're not, but you're just honestly, I use a balanced oil in the daytime. I'm able to drive. I'm able to function. I'm able to work. I'm able to, I don't hit heavy THC usually until the end of the day. Um, but a one-to-one -one oil under the tongue in the morning, start your day. Honestly, um, you know what? I'm, per, I'm, you know, Gotta be I haven't taken anything like that in a long time and the oil worked works yeah me. Is, it, is it anxiety that you're dealing with um i have anxiety on like an extreme level and then i have ptsd too and i have yeah. um yeah. night you do well taking it like yeah you do well taking oils i mean mm -hmm. honestly there's so many people that use oils and i mean some of them use them in conjunction with pharmaceuticals i'm not a doctor i'm not a I just help people get access. Um, you know, everyone is different. Some people use them, accompany them. Uh, okay. with cannabis. Some people try to just, you know, take use cannabis and cannabis oils. Some people are able to. Some people are not. So I, I never push anybody to go either way because everybody's different. I always recommend that somebody like yourself. And I'd be more than happy to help you with that. You need to speak to a doctor who deals with uh, cannabinoids. And yeah. I can certainly help you with that. Please send me the information because I certainly they've will. given me every type of quetiapin, tiapin, can I a pin? Can I well, die? You know pin? Trust, trust me. <laughs> using it medically, me. and using, it, yeah, using it medically, like, yes, you know, and using no. it recreationally is different, you know? Yeah, because CAMH has diagnosed me with the disorder, whereas I cannot um, metabolize any psychotics. Yeah. And I've wanted to have more information about cannabinoids. But it was like this opportunity came up. So I was like, fuck it. I'm going to ask you guys. You know, I always recommend that, you know, when you're dealing, especially with what you're dealing with, anxiety, PTSD, you need to speak to a professional. And and sure. you know what? I, that's 
I would like to get that information to too, man. I go. Yeah, I think that's thing. why I asked because it's like you know, not a lot of people want to ask that question on these forums. Well, that's what like, I do. I help not. people get access, and you know what? It's it's great, you know. And yes, you'll still you'll still use your recreational and everything else, but you know, right now what's happening is is people, especially my generation, are walking into these stores. And they're, and they're going in there because there's 80% of them because there's something, they have some type of ailment, even though they're not allowed to talk about it in the stores. Um, and they're self-medicating, either they're um, taking too much and greening out and never going back, or they're not taking enough and they're like, this shit don't work. So like, you know, my voice is, is that I'm not regulated by the AGCO. So guess what? I'll tell you. I'll tell you what you should get in the recreational store that might help you. You know what I mean? Nobody nobody can stop me from telling you that. So I'm not I'm not saying I'm not giving I'm just saying these are the products and I try to teach people my age about them. Um I try to teach them what the inside of a store looks like and prepare them before they go in. This is big. This is like for some people a really big deal. Um, so this is what my whole business is all about is making people my generation and older comfortable with legalization and um, cooking with it doing whatever they want with it growing it whatever they want to do just so long as that they know that they're comfortable with it I appreciate that thank you so much Mimi because like you know shit is scary out here nowadays you know and then on top of it to have the type of like whatever afflictions we all have and to have something that now in Canada, thank God, is so attainable. Absolutely. And now we can have these conversations and open forums and have a place called the fucking Smokers Club. What the fuck? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, yo. Absolutely. Yo. I I'm love you guys. So if, you need, if you're treating a medical ailment, you need to speak to a medical professional. PSA right there. We should like burr, 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 rewind. Burr, 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 burr. <laughs> I think that and you know what? And and if you're using it recreationally too, you're used to, you're you're gonna get more education if you speak to a, a, a healthcare professional that specializes in cannabis. I think that's the hard part. Like I see a lot of doctors, you know. I got and, some good ones. And like my like the one that I had, he just retired actually really weird. But anyway, he retired and I kept asking him about cannabis. Like even before it got legal, I kept asking him, I'm like, what do you, you know, like, what do you think? I was basically trying to be like, Hey, like, I'd like to do this. You know what I mean? And he just like, he's like one of those old school minded people, you know, and he's, he's like, no, that's, you know, I can't do anything. There's no medical proof or whatever. And he just, he just wouldn't even, wasn't even open to the idea of it, you know? But how quick was he to prescribe you whatever, like, Percocet? Yeah, he gave me... I've, I've been on every fucking drug. And that, that's one thing, like, you can look at, like... Look at BC, out in BC, how many people are just, like, completely hooked on whatever because it's just that easy to get whatever prescribed. Well, I think I think that, that that's the... Pharmaceuticals is big business, right? Is, right. You know what I mean? They're not going to promote anything that's not going to make the money. They go to school for nine years to make sure they're brainwashed enough to push that shit. Well, I had that similar experience. It's called Dr. Feelgood. Shit. Great had, song by Motley Crue, by the way. You know, you go to the people that, like, you're I wish we could supposed to help you, and they're the ones that are getting you hooked and getting you even more fucked up. Okay. There's more in the ball. No? Sad day. Yeah, all I need is, um, I just need, um, I, I will um, contact each one of you separately and get the information that I need, and I will refer you to the clinic that I deal with. Oh, yeah. Thank you. No That's problem. I'm more than happy to do it. I'd rather see people do it. Okay, I love you guys so much. I have to charge this phone and the whole you guys smoking and me not smoking and drinking too much wine. I have to perform, right? So <laughs> I'm going to go charge my phone. I'm going to set up the system and I, I'll be back in like 15 minutes. Is that okay? Okay. okay. That's perfect. Yeah? 
Yep. All right. Thank you, Yachty. Thank you, Joel. Thank you, You're Mimi. Welcome, thank you, McLaughlin. Thank you, Smokers. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, <laughs> my Genesis. Yeah, you know, I shall return. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you the cute background for now, though, but that's, that's, you go. That's re Recharge your battery. I had a great couple weeks ago. <laughs> yeah. Where are we at now? And I was trying to ask the doctor instead of giving me painkillers, can I just get some weed? And I had to ask four times before they acknowledged my question. And they were like, uh, no, that's really severe. But they gave me pills, the proxen or something. I took them one day. I just smoked for that kind of stuff, you know? But they don't, it's so crazy how still, like, they will, she wouldn't acknowledge me. I asked her the fourth, I was just asking, pushing just to see, it. is she actually ignoring me? Or, and she was, and she was like, oh, no, 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 that has to be for, like, if you're a cancer patient or something, they give that to you. But, I mean, I use weed for headaches or my menstrual cramps work for me. Absolutely. You know, it's, it's, I think you're going to see, I mean, you're going to see, like, I mean, already there's benefit companies that are covering it for certain ailments uh, for certain patients, or they can use their extra expenditure account to put towards their medical cannabis. Um, so, you know what I mean? We're, it, it's, it's a slow process, but we're getting there. We're getting there. Um, it, it is tax deductible. Once it's prescribed to you, uh, you keep all your receipts because then it's medicine to you. You know, it's tax deductible. Um, that, so, if you have a status card, do you get even, do, you, do, they, do they honor status cards too? I believe that you would not pay, yeah, you wouldn't pay tax on it. Yeah. Game changer. Yeah, so I mean, you know what I mean? And it's it's You'll get definitely, extra gram out of every quarter, right? Yeah, I, I hey, mean, I, I would assume so. Um, but like I mean it's it it's just the information is very valuable, especially when in, there's people my age and older that are trying going back to this after maybe 20 years, 30 years of not ever of doing it, maybe they haven't done it, you know, and it's, it's changed a lot since then. Let's face it, cannabis. I mean, you know, let's talk, let's, let's let Joe talk about cultivars, you know, like, I mean, it's changed, like, since I was, you know, this is insane. What's, what happened to cannabis? It's insane since when I was young. It really yeah. is. Um, can I ask you to say what you said again? Ask Joe about what? Cultivars. Just grow, like, different strains, different... See? They didn't have many strains back in the days. Yeah. Oh, no. Well, you know, I remember no. when hash plant came out. Like, oh, my goodness. I'm hearing things like that I was actually getting rocked in grade nine on like 7% THC and I was loving it, you know? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I was like, what? It's yeah. true. <laughs> it took a well, lot of like more picky over the, brain talk. over the time because there's more to choose from. There's more to choose from, but I find like people take, like people are very quick to just take whatever they're told and think that it's law, you know? Yeah. Like, just because somebody says, yo, this is pink kush from wherever, like... That doesn't mean that that's what it is. It could actually be anything. That's true. You know what I mean? Like you don't really know, right? Like you're 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 trusting that that's what you're what you're getting, right? I think like I think I, it'd be cool to get to a point where we actually can know. You know what I mean? However, it is that we get it, or if we grow it ourselves, which is what I'd really like to get into. But I like the idea of knowing. Well, what I'm smoking, like 100% knowing, instead of like, well, they told me that this was whatever, you know. Leafly has like the graphic that they use to represent like the different like terpenes and like the balance like whether it's more like high or stone and stuff like that right yeah and, yeah. and, like, and that's based on I, I believe like an actual like analysis of the terpenes in the strain so I think they're moving that way but you have to get used to like seeing that like visual, that, that graphic, right? And like knowing that like the pointy spikes in sativa or something like that. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty cool. I think they are moving in that way. <laughs> but, uh, people, are get, people are getting high. Everything's starting to slow down. Everybody getting high. 
<laughs> okay, so this is what we're gonna. This is what we're gonna do. Has Has everybody smoked the strain of the day yet? I'm just because uh, I'm smoking it right now. I don't want to be the first person. We're waiting for ours to be I'm delivered right now. Okay, so we're not quite ready for that. Yet, right? Give me five minutes. Yeah, I'm, I'm rolling. I'm rolling my nuts right now. Uh, Give me two minutes here, and I'll I'll have one rolled up. Oh. Okay, let's think. This one here, I got shatter, hash. Weed. I got everything. Up here. Okay, my yeah, I got shatter in, in, in today's blood in here. Nice big old worm of shatter. Um. Okay, so here's a question. I think this is an all ladies question, I guess, because I'm curious to see what you guys think. Uh, how do you feel? And, and I'm interested because some of you obviously, well, I don't know what saying, obviously, I'm assuming don't listen to a lot of rap music. You know what I mean? So I'm curious of what all you ladies take is on the state of rap music, like right now. Like, like what you feel about it, what you think about it. Do you like it? Do you not like it? Right. Honestly, I feel like it's kind of trash. Like it has no substance. Um, I personally grew up on the Warren G's. Myself, you know, the old school artists who actually had something to say. And I feel like nowadays they're just talking shit. You know what I mean? They ain't got nothing to say. Yeah, it's just mad disrespectful. Right. I can, I can see that. Yeah. Cool. Anybody else? So I have no way to judge because believe it or not, I don't listen to a ton of rap music. Um, but... I think that's the cool part, though. Yeah, but I I have noticed lately, like, you know, this being a whole, like, female show, I thought maybe I'd mention that, like, I'm super impressed with how women are, like, I, I can't evaluate whether it's good now versus how it was before, but I love that the language that they're using is so, like, aggressive and, like, so many, like, I see so many guys who are cringing at some of the, the language that's being used in like new rap songs and stuff. And I'm thinking specifically of like WAP, obviously. Um, and I love that. I love, I don't know, maybe I'm just like some sort of weird person who likes to see guys squirm like that, but it's just, <laughs> you know? It's so true. And you like, know, to, that's the empowerment. For a long like, time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. How would yeah, they like no, us if, if we- you know I, mean? I just think it's interesting. I, like to see that. I think it's interesting that so many men and people in general were offended by what. But if you listen to like an old Jay Z album or something like that, they say the most out of pocket shit. You no, know, not even man. Listen to anything by Two Live Crew. Yeah, yeah. Wapping got the Wapping got oh, nothing on Two Live Crew. You know. <laughs> But would a woman write a song about a lip? Lip? <laughs> you know, that's they're right there. there. And that's why you can't, you can't really say anything. It's just like, yeah, I'm just not gonna. I'm not gonna go to it. Like, I'm not gonna listen to that shit. I'm gonna say it right now. I, I'm not a big fan Looking of this. Oh, nice. I'm not a big fan <laughs> of the song myself. But just because I don't like the song, it doesn't have anything to do with like with what the song's about or whatever. I'm just not a fan of the song. Yeah. However, I love the beat. And I was in the bathroom today and the song came on the radio. Like that song came on the radio and I'm like, I'm gonna do a mixtape song to that beat because the beat is banging. So I think the next time I record, which might be in the next 24 hours, I'm gonna I'm gonna rock to the Watt beat because that beat's banging. That's all I have. I don't have much more to say than that. I just never liked the song, but it's not because they're, I don't care about that, right? Like I don't care if that's what they're rapping about or, or what they're singing about or whatever. I just. The song itself doesn't sound good to me. I don't like, <laughs> I don't like that style of rap music, right? I like, I like stuff that's more meaty sounding lyrically. You know, so, like, you can have, like you have stuff like back in the nineties, like Eve and shit. You know age. what I mean? Where it's like she was talking about like the same, like being, being nasty and being empowering, but like she was still like clever about it, and she was still like. Well, like, there was some lady about little, little Kim, little Kim was and the little, WAP of that era. Little Kim, that's what I'm saying. It's like, WAP. WAP was soft compared to what Sorry, go ahead. Sorry. Go I think WAP was soft compared to what little Kim. Like, little Kim's fuck you. Come on. 
to what my motherfucking get money hoes, all the nigga hoes, and all my ghetto bitches in the. She's talking about lick my pussy while I'm counting a million dollars in the back of an armored truck. Okay. It's, it's more direct. It's that more direct for sure. Not oh. some shit. Rap it's not. Karis one says rap is something you do, hip hop is something you live, and it's very different. Like, first of all, it's a shame because Nicki Minaj's flow and sound is so fire, but she puts it on trash. It's on trade. But, like, uh, lady in the white shirt i'm sorry i forget your name but like you said old school that's the shit like i still listen to old school Karis, you know you do Cam, foxy brown foxy mm-hmm. brown that's yeah. a bad bitch right there that was yeah. she was my favorite that's a bad bitch right there <laughs> that's what she i'm was saying my favorite. but that's what i'm saying like i now it's just like i feel like it's just down to like rap music in general that it's like there's People can get away with not having any substance yeah. because they have because they're part of the industry. You know and they have a deal. So like the pe- the people that are actually doing it are like are having their spot filled by like this fucking trash artist mm-hmm. that's like able to sell. So I think the um, biggest thing that's changed is that the era that we're talking about, the people who were dope, were the people who were on the charts. Yeah. Like, even before that, like, I, like I was, like, a teenager in 88, you know? And, like, I remember that everything that was on the radio was the shit that I considered classic right now. Yeah. Rock Him was on the radio. Big Daddy Kane was on the radio. Public Enemy was on the radio. Like, like all of it, like, like, we didn't, we, this was, like, way before Biggie and Pac. Like, there was a period where we didn't really have shiny suits, right? Mm-hmm. So even the dope shit was the shit that you would hear all the time, you know? That's the main thing that's changed is now the dope shit's still out there. You just got to really look for it. You know what I mean? You're not going to hear it on the radio. Sometimes it creeps through a little one, two, like a little Kendrick or a little, a little J. Cole will creep through. But generally, I mean, radio, rap on the radio looks like a minstrel show, you know? Like it's, it's very, it's very Sambo, like super Sambo, like here, you know, like, you know, dance, nigga, wow. dance, run, nigga, run. Like it's very, it's very like, yeah, man, lawn jockey, lawn jockey rap. You know, yeah. it's not, it's not fucking. It's that. That's the shit that they're feeding us. But that's the industry, right? The last thing the industry wants is any minority in power, right? And that that includes women, right? The, the industry doesn't want women in power because they're the minority. They don't want black people in power or whatever the case may be. They don't want minorities in power, right? So. That's really that what I feel has changed. I listen to tons of dope hip hop, but lots of it's new and I find it all the time. These guys can all vouch for you for me. Yep. You know, like I find dope shit all the time. That's but I have to look for it. Yeah, yeah. SoundCloud. Deep. I found so much dope people on SoundCloud. Even on Spotify, if they they'll all tune to your list and you find like you'll find new people, but yeah, you gotta search for it. There's a lot of dope people that are doing dope things, but it's it doesn't yeah, you gotta look for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's important, like platforms like ours. No, like, like obviously we're doing more than just music, but when it comes to music, I think it's important that we highlight those people. Yeah, because those are the people that don't really get a lot of media, right? Like, I don't need to give fucking Jay Z an interview. Like he's fucking Jay Z. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I need to give, you know, Century a fucking interview or or, or sell. I how do we pronounce your name? I know it's Genesis. Is it Sela or Sela? Sela. Sela. Yeah. Okay. Sela Johnsons. I was right. Sela. Sela. I was unsure. Sela. What's up? Yeah. No, I, I actually have, um, going into it, I actually have um, a question for, for Sela. Um, first off, I love your tracks. Um, you are the one and uh, Butterfly Waits, Butterfly you know, Ways. Like, especially like the second, like butterfly wings. Like, I felt, yeah, I fell in love with that track. I have that shit on repeat. Um, and like the way that you go into that track, it's very much like spoken word, and in a way, like, and I had to like touch it in like, who were your influences like growing up and like getting into music? Like, who were, who did you listen to like in the home or? 
Oh yeah. my god. Well, first my mom's really my parents both really into music, but my mom would listen to her records and her tapes all the time and she has pretty good taste. So that's a big first influence. But me you know, like I'm a huge Mariah Carey fan, Whitney Houston, Monica Brandy, the original uh, old school hip hop, nineties R and B. I'm a nineties R and B. I know yeah. some R and B. My baby making Spotify list, and I'll send you my hip hop Spotify list, and I'll send you my dance hop Spotify list, and then you're gonna tell me what what. But seriously, um, Erica Badu, yeah, Lauren Hill is my all time favorite. SWV, Karis One, Big Daddy Kane. She's dope. Oh, oh. Miss Education is top five albums of all time. Amazing. Yeah, Miss Education and Lauren Hill, top five rap really in the top five that. rap albums of all time. Yeah, hands right. down. I'll put it up against like, for me, top five from top to from beginning to end, production. Beginning to end, production, fucking her pen. The fact that she like she went from rapping to singing and everywhere in between. She really I'm took not. us like on a journey. Miseducation, as far as an album is yes. goes, like an actual album, top five of all time. But I gotta tell you, my top five with Lauren Hill is not the her Miseducation album. It's the album that everybody dogged her on. But to me, it's just MTV 2.0 unplugged, whatever MTV unplugged 2.0. It's just her guitar. Little bit of a band, it's just acoustic, really. Oh, well, it's live, though. Oh, that stuff, if you don't get what she's saying, it doesn't matter because if you're ready, your soul will absolutely feel it. It's I think the hardest, the heart, the, what, what hurt her the most was I don't know if she was misunderstood or she was just angry, but that whole like, I don't want white people to listen to my music thing really, really did some damage to her, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, even if that's how she felt, like, that I probably wouldn't have said that, considering the colleges, like, paid her rent. What she said was, I don't think she necessarily said that. I think what she meant in her tent, what she said was, she didn't make her music necessarily for white people, but if they enjoy it, fine. But, so if they're offended by any message she's giving, she's saying that's okay, because I didn't make it for that audience specifically. But if you're into it and you're digging it, cool. But I think it gets misinterpreted and misconstrued and someone along the way plays telephone and then it turns out to... Lauren I hear that. Personally, I don't see why anybody would get offended. She, she, she's entitled to, you know, this is who I made my records for. Like, like I'm, I'm a minority, man. I make my records for minorities. I don't know how to make a record for anybody else. You know what I mean? That's who I make my record for. Like, I, I'm a black Indian. I make black Indian music. That's what I make. You know what I mean? Like that's that's the people well, that that I relate to. That's that you know what I mean. So I I don't even I don't get offended by that. I actually think that that's pretty accurate. You know what I mean? Like people ask me like, or there's like friends like why don't you like friends? It's like I don't relate to anybody on that show. Like I'm sorry. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that makes sense. Yeah, I, mean, I, can't, I can't. Why would I get into that show? Like, everybody's corny as fuck. Everything's corny. But apparently, you know, it's amazing. <laughs> I don't know anybody's real life. You know what's really funny is I was upstairs. We, me and Nails were laughing about this earlier today. He only watches the comedy channel upstairs. So sometimes friends is on, but he's not really watching it. He just leaves it on the comedy channel, right? So we're sitting upstairs having a conversation and friends. Is playing on the fucking street, right? And I look at him and I'm like, bro, this is so weird that this fucking show is playing, you know? But Ross had a black girlfriend on the episode that was playing on the TV today. Yeah, for sure. They kissed and everything on screen, man. Uh, I, Straight I, up Stevie saying, Wonder shit. I'm just saying, like, you <laughs> consider it the greatest, you know, show of all time. And all my friends are like, yo, you gotta get into it, man. Oh, no, amazing, I don't gotta get into man. none of that. Like, well, I, you guys told me. Really, how am I gonna get into it? Give me my uncle Phil. I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yardy. Yo. I feel like you have something to say. I always have something to say. There you go. <laughs> Has everybody tried the? No, I'm high as shit, and I got halfway through the joint. I'm not lying. <laughs> you could have finished. But I put shatter in it too. I put a big ass one with shatter. You tapping? No. <laughs> hey, that's why you put it down. That's none of tapping, none of that. Right. I should break. 
She'll be ready soon. Yeah, she doesn't know how to roll, so I'm rolling for her. So when the joint's ready, she I'm probably the only person in here that can't roll their own weed. So. You can roll your no, I'm rolling her one right now. She'll be straight. She's ready. All right. So I think this is a perfect time for what I'm going to call a very special intermission. I, I think we're going to get a live performance from Century. I'm super excited about this. I'm very, very excited. Okay, wait, guys. Okay, wait, guys. Okay, wait, guys. Okay, wait, you guys. Do you guys want two songs or one? Like one should be enough. One's good. Pick your pick a bang. Pick whatever you feel like doing. Okay, I'm gonna give you guys some some like emotional things tonight. Then. Now okay. you're talking. All right. Now Just because talking. like I want to show you how much I appreciate how open everybody's been. Like these. Thank you. Even if you haven't seen me, I've been heart. listening. And like I appreciate like the actual conscious conversation and the openness and the giving of information. Like you guys are so dope. So Thank you, I'm gonna go make sure that this sounds great in order to give you guys forget whoever watches this after, but like just you guys this performance, okay? Oh man, that's dope. Thank you. All right, much love. Go smoke your big head. Get your stuff ready. Roll it just up. Let it. I'm give you some love. Awesome. Put the camera, just the camera at the position. Are we going to be able to turn that up to hear it a little bit? If we don't, then nobody talks. Turn the mics all the way down right now. Yeah, yeah. And when she's done, turn it back. You know what I'm saying? Can't see you. I can only see your shadow.
Hi guys. Hello. Long one, yeah. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Do I look cute? Is this light too bright? I can see your jacket, which is popping. I can see yeah, it. Okay, so this is a photo I here. My I homie makes this. Home. Come look, come look, come look. Show it. Okay. Even, even a detail there upon its string. But you know, upon him, OD and everything, I give it nice, give detail there. Yeah. Yeah. I'm telling you, you want somebody to support your shit, I'm the one. Look, ah, watch it. Oh, shit, start. Fabric is nice. Y'all detail in on the hood. But it looks like performance, so it's like shadows, so it looks all like. You like it? Okay, so yeah. this is what you call investing in people you believe in, okay? So I believe in this show, and I super believe in everybody involved. So I said, okay, let's get a studio. Fuck it. So I got a song for you, okay? I haven't performed this song in like a little bit more than a year. But it's super like emotional. It's super like, yeah. Okay. All right. I hope you enjoy it. I don't know if you guys are ready. Are you ready? Are we ready, Smokers Club? Ready. Ready. Wait. They didn't say they're ready. ready. Are we ready, though? Hell yes! Come on, baby. No, like actually, like legitimate, like like for real, for recording wise. <laughs> <laughs> they say yes. Okay, okay, okay. Ah, ah, yeah, I'm excited. Okay. Can you not hear us? That chair that he set up can't see shit. Okay, ready? Ah, ah, pretty brown eyes. Tell me why. I 
Shout out to the team. You don't know. Praise. We got the princess back here holding the phone. So I hope you guys like it. Well, let's get that pop. And at the end of the day, you know my information. I'm sorry if it was kind of loud. Obviously, we're in the rehearsal studio, so I can't quite gauge for you guys, but. <laughs> that was dope. That was the first time like I've performed since March. So like that felt real good. I appreciate it. Wow, thank you. That was all love. I enjoy it, I enjoy it. I got a new project coming out at the end of the month. I would love for you guys to, even if you could be just there live, any of you guys, whatever, we're going to do a Zoom get together. I got some charity stuff I'm trying to do as well. Um, some art privileges and everything like that. I'll send you guys the information as well. So yeah, we're definitely down to get thank you for your time. Yes. We'll I love y'all. I do have to get back to the kiddos though. So Thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate you. Me, please, please message oh, oh, me. I, I will. I that. will private message you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Okay. Yo, listen. Smokers Club up is positivity to the green for life. Bye, guys. Before you go, just okay. Oh yeah, you guys, listen, this is my homie DJ Blessed that's chilling in here with today. She is one of the wickedest DJs ever. Vinyl spinning thing. Like, like, like DJ DJ? Together from a socialized club. Yeah, that's we have dope. Turntables on set. Dude. I know we're not at her setup today, but next time. Yo, as soon as this COVID shit is over, you can come live, DJ live on the show. Yes! Where are you guys anyway? Niagara Falls right now. This is oh, you're Niagara Falls! Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm <laughs> not over there on the other side. <laughs> you want the Canadian side. Yeah, totally. You come. We have a recording studio and a podcast to set up in the same location. In where? We have a, a recording studio and a podcast is set up in the same location. Okay, are you your but you're Niagara Falls for real? Yeah. Okay. So next time we come to Toronto, we'll set something so up. You're, you're in Ottawa or Montreal right now? We're in Montreal. We were in Toronto, but we moved from Toronto. Montreal's a beautiful. Montreal. Scene. I'm pretty sweet. Pretty sweet. <laughs> You just need to unmute yourselves because we can't hear. Yeah, I can't hear. Can you hear us now? Are you able to hear us? 
I'm going to set this movie because it's quite as a long Can you not hear us? Is that what's happening? Just not very loud. Oh, so. How's that? Mic check. Mic check. One, two. That mic check. How's that? No. Better? Worse? Better? You You're me? muted. Now we're muted? You're muted. Oh, shit. Are you muted? No. One of you. Right. What, am I muted too? So, like, our uh, microphones here are muted. Then. I play that music if it's too loud. Maybe it's on the other one. Check, check, check. Can you hear me? You should be able to click right on the box and unmute yourself. Yeah, so now we have microphones like going into an oh, interface, okay. like actual mics. So we're not like using the mics on our phones. And he's saying over here that the signal is good. Huh. Not... Yeah, we haven't changed anything. I don't know why everybody's there you go. There you go. Okay. You can hear us now? Hear us now? Yeah. Yeah, I can. Yeah, that's better. Right. Well, as long as we're good now, that's all that matters. Okay. Are you hearing the echo at all? A little bit. A little bit of an echo. Okay. Oh, keep testing we'll it. We'll keep space keep space talking, space. and then we'll. Okay. Anyways. See how things. But um, no, I actually, Mariah. I want to help you all. I want to ask you a few questions because I mean, you seem to be like staring off into space, and I want to get you. Before, oh, you know, we know each other, so this oh, is gonna be it's gonna be funny. Like I think he's gonna I think he's gonna hit her up. He waited until I was high high. <laughs> Disrespect. High high. I'm not just high. She's high high. 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 She's hanging up, boys. Yeah. 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 This is not my usual routine. <laughs> Well, Mariah, you um, you consider yourself a human rights activist, and like, if I'm not correct, yeah, yeah, um, you're attending schooling right now. Yep, McMaster University. McMaster, what are you what exactly? Are you are you taking? So I am currently in the sociology honors program, and I'm gonna do my master's in social work. At this oh. Would you like after would you, would you plan on like going forward with so like, if you have my dream once I have my master's is to open up a psychotherapy practice that is Afrocentric. So centered in African and um, you know African Caribbean ideals. Um, I it bothers me that you know, psychology, psychotherapy, and you know, all those things are, you know, they really lack area of space for Black people to exist traditionally. So, um, yeah, when I open my psychotherapy practice, I want to tailor it for Black people specifically. That's, that's amazing. Yeah. That's, that'd be amazing work. Like, I mean, that's definitely something that we need, um, you know, because, I mean, if you look at the state of everything. We have no help. Like there is no help for it. You know? Um, I know even my sister, like personal, like, went into some personalization. You know, she felt very like shunned out and you know where she turned to. So, you know, something like that would, would definitely help. And like, it's good to see her go. But it took a lot but for other for other women in, in general. I think it's important for people to know that, you know, when it comes to like getting help for mental health and stuff, it's not a cookie cutter thing. It's not a one size fits all. And I think that practitioners need to be a lot more culturally competent and culturally specific to, you know, cater to the people that they're there to serve at the end of the day, right? So, yeah. I mean, to make that a reality, that would be, that'd be huge. I think so. I think there's a huge demand for it. Yeah. Um, but um, other questions. Um, I want to get into the whole Black Lives Matter 
movement and organization. Um, How's everyone doing over there? You know, I mean, because I mean, it's big. It's big all around the world. It's a big, you know, it touches all bases. And um, the way I'm, the way I'm looking at it, you know, um, do you believe that like the Black Lives Matter is pushing for change, or do you think it's just playing a role that, you know, it seems that, like, it's make it's making it seem like they're playing a role to make it seem like there's progression, like. I mean, it just seems like we need action right now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that, you know, it's just like, we're still just like, I don't know, we're moving inches, right. you know, in this fight that, you know. I think, I think the Black Lives Matter group as a group, I don't know much about them. I know that they're a little bit controversial. Some people are for them, some people are against them. My thing is like, the, the line Black Lives Matter promoting that is is only beneficial, you know. Um, the group itself, what they do in their activism, I can't really speak on it, but I know that the Black Lives Matter has kind of propelled that that ideal a bit. You know, people are talking about it. It's a discussion going on in homes, maybe homes where you know racism is, is a thing, you know. So this discussion is being had. Um, I will say that, you know, people have been having discussions for a long time and there's still some major issues. So I do think that there needs to be some more um, militant action kind of on the forefront. I don't think, you know, talking about it and spreading the word is going to solve the whole problem. But um, I, I just like that it's spreading the word at, at least, you know what I mean? And, you know, some people are asking questions that might not have asked questions before, so. I think that's important. No, for sure. Like it, it's a household name. Like, right. Or a household, yeah, a household name. So I have a question because yeah. I don't know the answer. I seen it online that the movement itself is owned by people that are not black. Is that is that a thing? Or like is it true? <laughs> <laughs> See, that's the thing. People always expect me to have all this knowledge on the organization itself. I literally don't know much about the actual organization itself, but that wouldn't surprise me. Because if, if you look at things like BET, if you look at things like or well, anything. Pretty much BET. anything that's not major by Tyler Perry is is run is run by what you or know non-people of color. <laughs> So would that surprise me? No, but I don't, I honestly don't know. Question number two: Does it make a difference? Absolutely. I like it's, it's. I just find that like the whole like organization itself. It's just a very passive stance. Like, it's just I, passive, you know. Like I came to chant. I can't breathe. Like oh, right. you know. Come on. I would like to know something to fucking happen then. Like, not to put you guys out of the bus, but I would actually like to know what your, uh, Mimi and Lettuce Lady, what your perception is, like, obviously, like, being Caucasian women, like, who seem to be pretty damn cool, you know what I mean? Like, what is your perception, like, from, like, through your eyes, you know what I mean? I think, like, Mariah, uh, I don't know a ton about the movement itself, but the words Black Lives Matter is a call to action, I think have been pretty effective to shine a light on an on an issue that has been largely just kind of swallowed, you know, like um, it hasn't had the light sh shown on it that it should have historically. So I think just those words and the significance behind them are very important. And I can obviously recognize that um yeah i but i don't know much about the the group um or who's behind it at all um the only thing i thought i mean i had done some research during a lot of you know what's been going on i mean let's face it we've had time we all needed to get woke and learn um and you know i'm from an older generation and there were things I didn't know. So I was very open to learning as much as I could. I was under the impression that it was three women, young, quite young professional women that were black that started it. But 
I could be wrong. Um, but um, yeah, it's, I think it's effective too. I mean, I think it's, it really is. Um, and it did need to be done. I'm, it did. It was about damn time. Yes, you know, really. Um, and if it, it took those words to, to shine light on it and then, hey, I'm all for it. I think the, um, from what I've learned, I think three black women did find it, but from what I've heard, from if my knowledge is correct, a white man's funding it. Oh, but okay. Found it. But when you go on the website, it's very anti, like, man in very flowery writing. So it's like, I feel like whatever their main purpose is, because the world on the whole isn't seeing it, how they're seeing it. I think you can have one intention, but if there's another energy towards another intention, it can transmute. So their original intention might've been to take down patriarchy from what I understand, from what I've learned of the three women. But what it's transmuted into is exactly what you guys are saying, like people are paying attention now and becoming more aware and waking the hell up after 50 billion thousand years. At least it seems like it, but when you look back, this has been going on from time, it's just we have more access to information now. So it's about, I think it's a spiritual warfare and I think people are waking up spiritually realizing how powerful we actually are. And if we came together, like if everybody woke up tomorrow and decided not even to buy a cheeseburger alone from McDonald's, all over the world, just that one item on their menu. Can you imagine? They would have to stop and be like, oh shit. Like imagine if you united that way, just take your money out of certain businesses, like shop local, support more black businesses. Like I just, just that's as simple as that. Support your homie that has a business. Like put your investment in that, trust that that building is gonna grow. Why would you give Jeff Bezos, who basically has all the money in the world, why would you give him another dollar when your homie's trying to start a business? He could be the next guy, but you'd rather go to Amazon and get it quickly than invest in somebody that you know and trust. It doesn't make any sense. And we just have to start doing that. With it's about good, like yeah. money management, good money management and like good investment. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Right. Oh. I, mean, I think the pandemic, the pandemic has brought a lot of light to uh, small business and the importance of small business and supporting small business. Um, you know, I think it's, uh, I think people will think a little more about where they're spending their money and yeah, I think we're going to see that a big shift in that. And that's okay too. I find, I find the pandemic, especially like, it's driving everything online. And like, so we're seeing a lot of creative things. I'm not just seeing like new businesses or small businesses. Seeing very creative and like, you know, I don't want to say risky, but outside of the box, like business ideas mm -hmm. that, that are working for people. You know what I mean? Like, it's amazing. Like, I can just say, like, even this podcast, like, it was only like, Two months ago, where I was like sitting in my living room, and I'm like, I'm gonna make a logo, and I made a logo, and like two months later, we're like doing a show, we like built a set, like like we're all together, and like it's like everything organic, like even getting people to come on the show has been like super organic, and we're like really grateful for all of that. But like this is like a really creative platform, and, like we've been sitting around like obviously the ways to make money, you know, so. It's, it's been a blessing, but I, I find a lot of businesses right now are like very creative. Yeah. You know, and I don't think everyone's had the same experience during the pandemic. I think there's been people who have, you know, not maybe, you know, a lot of people put their time to good use. Um, a lot of, you know, creative juices, you know, tightening up business plans, like you said, making your logo and, and that's great. I mean, some people though, I mean, really have had, had str have struggled through it as well. So it's been from both ends of the spectrum. It really has. I got, I, like, I can only speak for myself. It's, it's been, the most difficult and the most creative time at the same time. Exactly. 
Like every possible thing I could have gone through, I've gone through like during the like, legit. But but my creative like energy is like off the charts right now. I did like two albums on goals writing for other people, I'm like, making beats, we're doing the podcast, I'm doing design all the time, like my creative, the creative side of it is like just exploding, you know? But then so is, you know, my mental health as well. And I, I want I wonder if there's a correlation between I mean I know there is, except like usually it happens younger, but like Kurt Cobain and Jim Morrison and like, you know, Amy Winehouse and all these kind of people, like they were like uber like creative, like alien creative, you know? But they all had like these like severe mental problems that like basically drove them into a wall. Not like they don't you know what I mean? And I find like the more creative people are, the creative genius now we're talking about, right? Are the ones who suffer from the most like next level, like, you know, mental things and things they've gone through, like their life, like Michael Jackson. Like if there was ever a poster child for mental illness or popular, it would be Michael Jackson. You know what I'm saying? That doesn't make him a bad person. It's just like something that we don't actually like, we're not, we don't talk about. Now, I was so excited earlier really because we talked about it. So I guess I'm so bringing it back to that. But like the most creative shit usually behind it is something, you know, rabbit, yeah. rabbit minded person. You know what I mean? I'm sure it comes from a dark place. Um, you know. Sailor. Yeah. I, I have a question for you because um, I know in the Montreal area, um, you're pretty involved with different groups and uh, venues around the city, um, like the McFly Road kit, like the McFly Road. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Okay. Sorry. Oh, yeah. So. I'm working with um, Via Lakeisha McFly. She is a dancer, um, stylist, uh, curator. She does all, major, all sorts of stuff. Um, we're working together to do, uh, we're gonna be dropping a YouTube channel for kids. So it's called McFly World. And we've come up with, we're writing songs for kids. So it's educational content, but it's like to dope beat. So like, you know, Baby Shark, all that stuff is kind of, like, it's annoying. It's like that kiddish, like, annoying shit. So, like, if parents have to listen to that again. It's like, ugh. But, like, these beats are, like, banging. So, it's like, you're going to want to hear it again because it's like, eh, 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 eh. And, you're like, they're sick. It's like, so it's like beats for adults, but education for kids, you know, between the ages of, let's say, 2 to 12 is, like, that broadest expand. So, we made a bunch of, I just actually got back from BC. I was there last week. We shot six videos in three days. Uh, so we have a bunch of stuff coming out. We have like a hip hop one. We have a self love one. We have a planets one. We have a numbers one. We have an ABCs one. We have a, we did we we taped like we wrote ten songs. I think we recorded. I think we recorded all ten. So I think we have seven eight videos done now. But uh, yeah, so for that if you have kids nieces or nephews whatever like tune in it's at mcfly world kids on ig okay oh, yeah. I, I got younger cousins it's a little lot of fun but yeah oh yeah no and i um i see you dropping like crazy freestyles on online all the time and i'm just like i'm, I'm just wondering like What's what's next in store? Like what's what what's the next thing that you're on? Like studio. what's the next thing I'm on? How do you need like what, what are you doing next? Doing? What's up next? Yeah, well, like what what's like show wise okay. or just in life? Pardon? You mean like mu just music wise or like just in general? Music. Yeah, yeah music. music wise. God, I have honestly, I'm so behind, but I'm gonna actually wait. Tomorrow's Monday, right? So I'm actually gonna go back, going back to the studio tomorrow because I have a, like an R and B uh, EP that I want to put out. It's been written forever. I just like I'm getting to it now, so um, I'm gonna start recording tomorrow. 
So I'm, I'm just wondering because I'm definitely going to three that because I'm definitely, you definitely got but me in your face. I have a bunch of stuff that I want to do that I'm planning. And it's like the part of social creative social thing. Social also, yeah, and there's also I rock with the socialites club. So we're building a lot of things. I had with DJ Blessed me and her run that with our other homegirl, Denise. Uh, but it's kind of like a women's brand collective. So we're going to start doing like shop like a shop soon and all that stuff we, we put on events like online events and stuff we perform with some uh we do a couple of festivals for people in jersey and stuff a lot online so we're creating we're creating and we're going to do a youtube youtube channel all that stuff so there's lots of stuff coming within the next year don't know when what how when but it's all happening we're always creating so you know, so i have two questions just, uh, question number one Do you have all the beats for your RB album yet? Do I have which? You have all the beats for all the songs for your RB album. For this one, yes, but I'm always creating. Like, I'm always like, that's not going to be the only one I do. Because I make fire, so yeah. nails, like DJing. I'm always fire. Wanna, and I like to do like singles in between, whatever. I'm always open to, to all that kind of stuff. So. Yeah, man. Okay, that's my first question. My second question is, and this is Spencer's fault, blame it on him. But he said that you free, he sees you freestyling all the time. Is this true? It is. <laughs> okay, guess what? What's going on? I want something off the top right now. Okay, can I have a beat? Oh, shit. Oh, shit. I can probably find one. It'd be best if you had the beat because we don't have a live audio feed for the music. I can pro do it from my speaker, I think. Try. All right. Hold on. What am I going to play? <laughs> Oh, I'll do whatever I did yesterday oh, for uh, that thing. We're going to play the movie then. No, no, I'm just going to do the beat. The beat is nice. <laughs> can you hear this? I can hear you. Oh, can you hear the beat? No, no. Can you hear it? Yeah. Can you hear me? Okay. This beat that I pop from the internet. He said, "Drop your lips and I will heavy set into your Gmail." Those were the details, so I pressed download, and now I'm on this smoker's love episode. In my waking bake tea, you know I go by this say like G. I'm really, really digging on the company. I represent the socialites club B. We in MTL. Je m'appelle Céline Genesis. Oh mon Dieu, a chanté avec tu. Je chante pour toi, Abo. I say this Céline Genesis. I'm running through. I'm gonna see through the beat of this song. You know it feels good and we all getting along. Vibration. Think of me, these tingling sensations. I hope they see the feeling all across the nation that CA Canada go no way representing all that truck that push was rolling up that bush. No, no, I got the really good in the car and sativa. I would he just believe you the hybrid, hybrid, a young fly king. Actually, I'm a little bit older, but hush, sis. You don't know, I look like 22, but I am older than that, and I will come through to you. You will see me spitting on the street and shit, but it's okay. No COVID, only my friends, no way. I'm a healthy bitch, I think real rich. And if you got your attitude, then I'm gonna ditch ya. Because it's sister, don't get it twisted. I is easy that's what you got to bring to me. I'm saying the genesis. Say my name. I want you, I want you to make it rain. That was nice. I, 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 I'm so high. I'm so high. I feel like a real cool night. Oh, I, 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 I,
How did you get your CMPR? I mean, you go on the Canadian like website and they make it seem like you have to freaking jump through hoops. Like I'm like, I'm reading over it. And I'm like, what, what, where do I go to fill it out? Like, what am I doing? You know? Well, you have to become. A, are are you a patient right now? No, I'm not a patient, but I I mean to be able to to grow my own plants if I so like so want to. You know what I mean? Well that would be more of a say microprocessing type license as opposed to an ACMPR. An ACMPR is access to cannabis for medical purposes regulation. That's what it stands for. That's what it is. Um, so you have to seek out medical help and uh, there are places that will do grow licenses for you right now my um well I'm going to be honest with you I may as well um I have been um negotiating with some places to to offer that service through my business but as of late I've seen a lot of kind of different things in the news that have made me kind of decide that maybe I might not want to offer that through my business. Um, but you, there are lots of places that will do it. Um, depending on how many plants you want to grow, um, you, it, it, it has a price tag, uh, like everything else pretty much. I mean, for a straight prescription, you don't have to pay, but you know, for grow licenses, you're going to, um, you have to pay for that person to sign that responsibility. So um, it's kind of shopping around and seeing who will do it for you for the most, you know, the most credible company for the best price, basically. Um, like I said, I'm currently not offering that service. I can certainly privately um, tell you of a good place that I know that's credible, um, but I currently don't offer that service. Um, I, I, 
No, it's, I mean, it's, hmm? it's been too low because I'm, I'm still I'm still debating. I mean, you know, it's just there seems to be lately um, an awful lot of you know, people getting licenses to grow, say, 100 plants, and they're growing 500, you know, like, there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot, you know, and for you to put your business on the line, for that type of, um, because even though maybe you didn't sign the papers, but you, um, you know, you made it happen, or what have you, you were involved with it, it's, you know, it's a lot of liability, um, you know, but people that I trust and people that I would know that are going to be ethically using it properly, I have no problems recommending them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for it's very important. Yeah. I just everybody tells you a little bit here and there and but right. I mean, you being so, depends on how many plants you want to grow. It depends if you, you know, you're growing them inside, outside. It's, you know, you have to have medical um, paperwork. It's, you know, there, there is a bit of a to do to it. But um, like I said, you know, it's just not something that I'm really interested in getting too involved with right now uh just for liability reasons um but like i said i do know some great clinics that do a great job doing it so yeah i want to know what the lettuce lady's favorite strain of weed is i knew you were gonna ask that i don't know how i do but i i do um granddaddy purple right now and you had an answer. That was easy. That? Yeah. She was prepared for it. She threw it right back at me. <laughs> Do you smoke um, just flour or because you have lettuce, maybe when you can hear me? Or do you smoke like hash and other stuff as well? Uh, not so much hash. Like, I, I don't know. I'm not a big hash person, but I smoke flour and concentrates, like other concentrates. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I do edibles every now and then. I'm kind of a, you know, multi-combinational stoner. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah. Do you not smoke hash because there's no good hash around or are you just not a hash person? Uh, well, I mean, it was never, ever available when I was like learning to smoke weed. So mm. I just never kind of default to it. But uh, I was thinking the other day because I actually found some randomly in my house. So I thought maybe I would like go back to like old school ways that I used to smoke it. Like um, uh, BTs. Did you guys ever do BTs? Oh, they used to get so high, but they were like, so gross. BTs, <laughs> they were so gross. Oh, oh. BTs are hot knives, you know, either or. Right, I don't want to burn myself though, and hot knives are famous for that. <laughs> I, passed, I passed out once as a teenager doing hot knives over <laughs> over top of the torch, and I walked around for two weeks with the butter knife marks like on my face. There was always one. Like, always one. Like, always one. Knife, you know? <laughs> yeah, but, but really ETs bad. are the best, you know. Um, I come from. I come from that generation of, yeah, like we smoked a lot of hash. There was a lot of hash I, around I, when I, I was I young. Lots. Like this. This is how you know. Lots. I, I love hash. Yeah. Mm. Oh, nice. I love it. It's so the tasty. This guy over here, this funky man with the red hat here, gets the best hash. I swear, you should see this chunk. It like, makes mine look like a smart. Show them, don't do one more front. Don't do like a lion. <laughs> oh yeah ash and honey oil and i mean uh, I, listen you know it's funny you do i mean there is one lp that's making honey oil and i've tried i'm 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 enjoying the cartridge of them and it's uh top leaf and it's it's pretty good and it has right. like a nice honey oil taste to it and oh yeah Oh, like it's it's making a slow comeback. It's I coming to, back. See, I want yeah. to get a rig. I guess I want to get a rig straight. Yeah. That's what I want to get. I don't want to. 
Because I always fuck up rolling it in joints like it all sticks up. And then I'm wasting all the It's like all you need all you need is a pin and a, and a bread clip. If you have a bread clip, you can spread the oil no problem and never get it on the pin. It's true. It's like just hold the pin. I'm fucked up bread. every time. I'm like, <laughs> Oh yeah, grease up those papers, eh? I remember that. I mean, that was big when I was. There was lots of that around when I was young. People were bringing it back from Japan by the, yeah, exactly. like literally, like, like it was everywhere. I lived in Scarborough, and Oshawa had tons of oil. Like it was like the whole city was filled with oil. Really, yeah, you could get every kind of oil all the time when I was like a kid. Still back in the day. Yeah. <laughs> See, I always thought that oils was like, I now feel like it's like, this is, this is not, it's, it's no definitely not, it's so definitely a big thing when I was like in high school, but I also remember that back then the St. Louis Choice had like the whole like Pickering, Oshawa, Ajax on lock, and then they got, they got run out. I always had a theory that the oil left when the St. Louis Choice was. Because when they were there, there was tons of it. And always it the same. Like, if, like me asking you, okay, the older shit, the older oil that I know that, like, the crazy, how pure it is now, like, I don't know. It's like 99%. You know, the oil back then that you hot. It might have been because well, I was a kid. It might have been because I was a kid and I didn't know no better. And, like, and, like maybe now hot's not big. Maybe I would just be like, what the fuck is this? I don't know. But, I remember it being very good, you know? I remember hash being very good, but I remember not being able to get very good flour. Oh, the cannabis is way better now. I mean, the cannabis is so good now. Like, I mean, compared to, you know, yeah. You know, it's like branches. It's mostly branches. That's what I do. When you were a kid. Yeah, it's <laughs> see, 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 that's what I'm interested since he just posted a picture on Instagram today, I guess he's somewhere in the state, and he, and he caught the bag in the street, and it literally looked like that Chinese Chong, like Mexican, like brown seaweed, like it, it was like a real life dime bag from like the seventies. <laughs> <laughs> or it was green, hair. green, green. Or it was like really green, like yeah, like wine green. <laughs> yeah, 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 like really green. Like it was, yeah. it was nothing. I mean. I think about it now and I see, you know, the beauty of it. And I think of what we smoked back then and we thought that that was great. You know, I mean, of course, over the years, it got better and better and better. But I also um, think that that's the great thing about cannabis culture, like the whole copying of weed and like the time that you have to put in to like find a good plug and like all that kind of stuff is like part of it, right? Like when you're young, you're not supposed to be able to do it. It could be not be dudes like everybody else. You know what I mean? Like, like, like it wasn't until I got older and started hanging out with like, like older hippies or like friends and parents were like hippies and shit. Like that's when I started like getting good weed. Before that, like I was like whatever I could get. Like I didn't even care about it. You know, weed and tin foil. You know? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, I was born in 1963. I still remember smelling weed. My parents smoked weed constantly, constantly. You know, um, that's, you know, that's, I, I remember, I remember going to the drive-in with them, with them and smelling them, smoking it. <laughs> I, they thought I was asleep in the back, you know, like, I mean, I remember that, you know. You know I have to say, I mean, one of my 20 years later, realization just... is the fact that, like, I've had the opportunity to smoke weed with my dad. And, like, that's, like... Right. It, it's just such a great thing. Actually, that's why Granddaddy Purple is my favorite strain. It's because that's what we smoke together. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> yeah, it was like a bonding experience. It's so awesome. It really is. Yeah. I've never got to smoke with my parents, sadly. Well, no. no. Would you, think, you would think, like, if you knew my dad, my dad's a musician. My dad's, like, super cool. I'm sure that my dad smoked weed when he was younger. But then he, like, married my stepmother and got all domesticated in small town eyes now really it's not that stuff you know but like i've never been able to smoke with him but i've been able to do music with him and he's been around like he was around like early days of me making music i remember bringing him to the studio and listening to like early demos and stuff and we'd be rolling up and he'd be like oh it's okay 
I don't like him. <laughs> but he didn't smoke. But he just he was cool about it. Yeah. So it makes me think that it was probably a time that he did. But he's just from that generation where I don't do that. You don't do that with your kids. Type thing. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, the, the late 70s and 80s really changed that whole flex. You know what I mean? So. Oh, yeah. It's... Like, I was born in 1972, so I'm like 10 years, I think 10 years after me. So it's amazing yeah. what a decade it would be as far as, like, culture and the like parents smoking weed with their kids versus not smoking weed and, like, how much the culture changed in that decade. It's pretty crazy. You're the same age as my husband. So, yeah, I, I totally, I you know what I mean? I totally know what you're thing is like you're like what you're you know what i mean compared to my, it's so cool that's really cool yeah exactly yeah that's what i like about the show it's a different generation thing like spencer over here is very young and, hey, uh, ca cannabis is good is bringing together different generations and oh man, it's it, amazing. That's it is the show is bringing everybody together it really does. Yeah. I mean, we, I, I've spent half my life hiding, or most of my life hiding from it, you know, and not, you know, and to be able to shout it from the rooftops now, it's like, it's great. I mean, too long. Too long. I was so happy. I, you know, I had worked in the, in hotels and, you know, sales and management and whatnot for basically my whole life. And I'd use cannabis my whole life. And it was like, when I knew this was happening, it was like, you know what, am I going to, is it going to happen before? Am I going to have time? Like I was like racing against the time to basically change into this industry and to be able to at least spend the last say five to seven years of my professional career in the Canadian cannabis industry and I've gotten to so you know what I'm really 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 excited I'm really happy about that because it was tough at 50 to say hey I'm I want to I, I I specifically went looking for cannabis centric jobs like nice to do so at 50 years old i thought you know what if i have something to offer i've used this all my life it's i have something to offer so between my sort of and i'm a human resource grad so between hr and hotel and hospitality and then i thought i'm done with that and i haven't looked back it's been almost six years now that i've been in the cannabis industry so it's it's great. That's amazing. Um, do you grow your own legally, I would imagine? Um, you know what? I'm not so good at it. I do grow my um, own four plants. Um, but for my medicine, I have a designated grower. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm not that I'm good. like looking into all that stuff right now but for several reasons. A lot of people use designated grower with their prescription and their ACMPR. If they're like, I don't really necessarily have the time or I'd like to maybe make, I think maybe as I re start to think about retiring or what have you, I think I'm going to be going more into it. But I mean, you know, I just don't have the time right Love now so and, I, and like I said I'm not that great at it so um I do my four have done pretty good though this year I, I'm pretty happy um but uh I have a designated grower for my uh ACMP yeah ACMPR that's awesome anything else over there no. you so I'm happy to say that. That's the whole point. The smokers club. I love how the show slows down as you get near the end. Everybody's like, wasted. Slows down and people are so late, right? Myself like, getting more and more stoned on camera. This is killing me. <laughs> she's still here though. I thought she'd be passed out by now. She's good. She's actually lighting up right now. I'm impressed. No, I'm actually good. Like, I'm not, um, do you have some questions for the medicine? Um, yeah. Holy shit. I really All right. Okay. Me too. Really 
Um, you do run uh, your own like organic uh, CBD shop, if I'm if I can no. Call. No, I, uh, I'm, I've been working with one out of BC, um, but no, I don't, I don't run my own. I don't have any Lettuce Lady branded stuff. I just, I'm really an enthusiast at the moment. <laughs> you know what, I, on Facebook, when, we, when I posted your picture, I, I just typed in the Lettuce Lady on Facebook. I tagged it because I was like, it has to be her, you know? Yeah. And then I got a DM from, from someone who's like, you typed me a post. I was just wondering, like, how do I know you, or do you know my brand? And I was like, actually, I I thought I was typing somebody else. I was like, I have a podcast, and, and we're interviewing her on the podcast. She was very chill. She makes food, which makes sense, right? Lettuce, maybe, right? She makes like healthy food. So I was like, check out her page. It's like all all like meals and stuff. But it was just funny. I just naturally listened to the deal. Like, there only could be one lettuce. Thing. Well, that's great. I feel responsible for your further education about, like, you know, food and whatnot. Yeah, exactly, right? So I'm good get, about I, that. I, you know, I, get to, I get to know you, a fellow enthusiast, and I get to learn about some new food, you know? The win-win. Uh, yeah, and I don't have to remember a true name. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't have a presence on Facebook. I, uh, I've, I've been trying to leave Facebook behind. It, it's been a part of my life for way too long. So uh, I hear that. yeah, because I replaced it with Instagram, which is so much better. I know it's a bit contradictory, but pretty really, soon. I, I like Instagram a lot better than Facebook. I could live without Facebook. Yeah, I could live without Facebook. Except that yeah. my mom's on Facebook. So yeah, you know. Mom doesn't know how to run an Instagram. You know, like she just had it there. My mom has an Instagram page, but there's no picture on it. Yeah. And I'm like, you can do the trick. Instagram is my safe space where my mom doesn't go. <laughs> so <laughs> my mom's my mom is, is is very cool. She's old, she's older, she's an older lady, like in her eighties. Oh. And uh, but she's very cool. She's like she's super current and she's still you know her clothes. She still likes the match of clothes, and she got to very young. She like she 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 her she dates men younger than her as well. Like generally my like my mom my mom's like that, but she doesn't smoke weed because she chokes on it. But she asks me about edibles and stuff all the time because she wants to know about her pain. She, she should be taking do. oil. She should I'm be. I'm gonna just... tell her about the oil. I'm gonna message you about the oil anyway. Yes. But, I'm, I'm gonna tell her about it. When you tell me, I'm gonna I'm gonna push forward to her. I was already thinking of that. So. Yo, do you blame your mom for the reason you choked on me? <laughs> no, like I, I, you I swear to God, God, you said. Dude, I'll, I'll tell you what I That's the reason. I'll tell you. you sure. I'll tell you the reason. <laughs> 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 this this <laughs> man <laughs> number one and two. I tell you the real reason. The real reason when I was a kid. At the very beginning, my sister lived with us for a while. And she had a boyfriend, his name was Stefan. I'll never forget this guy. He's such a stoner metal guy, you know? And like, I know it's Stefan. So he left the cash out on, on, on my dresser in my bedroom, you know? So I'm like, I don't know what it is. I took the hash, and now I live in Teasdale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I went to the ball court in Teasdale, and I took it to the older heads, because I didn't know what it was. I'm like, what's this, right? So then they fucking hold it up and we smoke it. But to get to the point of why I choked so much, I spent years, and even now, I was smoking a lot of hash. But the early years, the older guys used to mix hash with menthol cigarettes. Yeah. And, yeah. and they said it was smoother. So I spent menthol. My first 15 years of smoking any THC product was hash with menthol cigarettes. And plus, yeah. I smoked cigarettes for years, and that's why I choked a lot. I remember that too. Yeah. And I mean, think about it. We're smoking tobacco without a filter. Like it's so bad. Like oh, I haven't smoked tobacco. I haven't smoked tobacco now for like six years. So I hate it. Um, but I mean, honestly, yeah, I think about it back then, or even just stretching your these these kids that stretch their cannabis out and and smoke it with tobacco or poppers or whatever the oh, hell they're no. doing like oh, i don't know so what disgusting. Disgusting. No, I, can't even, I can't even lie i can't even lie 
I like it's not it's me. not the way you should be smoking I know, I using know, cannabis okay. at I all know. like I i'm so I against know. it like no i'm sorry I'm don't sorry. do yeah. it I mean, but i'm done with, i'm done with that now and that's why i say i want to tell my i want to tell don't my. do poppers no 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 no, no. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm it from Mimi. Don't do poppers. The only, toba the only <laughs> tobacco that'll hit my weed is I smoke a tobacco every now and then. That's that's mine. Oh, that too. They're that's nice. They're smooth. You know? Until you're, you're older. And you're like, yeah, until you choke, until you choke like you. Yeah, that, that's that's, that's what what not say, and I'm not using the same tobacco. But I usually no, smoke bombs. This is so smooth. You usually smoke bombs. Now we all talk as John Cena. It's like, oh, yeah. it's nice. Bad. But no, I, I I started off smoking green and like pipes and bongs. And then I found out that you can save some money by stretching it. By stretching it. <laughs> and I was, yeah, you know, but like, and I was hooked on that for years. But I'd say like I'd say five five years. Five years a lot of it happened. Yeah. yeah. You can five blow out your lungs but pretty good doing know, it I too. In the last in the last yeah, not good. You still smoke one. A lot. Still smoke You're one. making you cannabis smoke. unhealthy when you do that. You know and that, you're right? Money on the blunt, so you I don't, but I don't do that anymore. Okay, the odd blunt, I, I'm, I'm even will, will indulge in the odd one. I'm not a yeah. huge fan, but the odd time, I like it. Well, I want some banana leaves, so the best shit, and you're not smoking directly. I like. I'm getting the new rose petal ones in my store. Um the uh the road that are the actual rose petal wraps so oh, yeah. that so i cool. thought you could only make your own i didn't know that I oh no uh that's i've got so access, that's I've got you access to them you know I mean? is, it, is yeah. it your brand or you just no they're not store? my brand but okay, um <laughs> somebody that i work very closely with does their public relations so they're actually from the states so yes, but I have access to them. So I'm hopefully going to be getting them very soon. I, I'm going to order them immediately. Yeah. I need to. Okay. I need to, yeah. Immediately. How are you in, Mimi? No, wait, We're going to smoke it on the show. What Thank you. Are you in? Well, I, yeah, I know. I need to. What? what are you in? Hamilton. 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 So can you deliver those things, the rose petals? I do actually. I did a lot of delivery during the first pandemic. I mean, I mean the first um, shutdown. I have a feeling we're headed to a second one. So, but yeah, um, yeah. I have quite a pretty big online store. I have about seventy five items. It's it's it's. I'm building it. You know, slowly but surely. Um, but I can get just about anything you could ever want. Um, I do, you know, the butter makers, I do the Lebos, I do all, I'm a raw dealer. So, I mean, I have all of that too. So, um, yeah. Yeah. I, know, I, it's, it's, yeah. I so, buy raws all the time online. I'm going to buy it from your, your page. You know? And I do, um, I'm, I'm branching into a couple other things in the, in, in the retail space um, soon. Things that I can't talk about right now, but um, yeah, so a few, few different things on the go. So, yeah, it seems that um, I'm the number one demographic walking into the retail stores. So a lot of people um, are, are interested in what I'm doing. So I've been getting a lot of uh, interest and, and yeah, it's, Cause it's true. If you, I was with a client the other day and I took her to one of the retail stores and I said, let's just sit out front and I want you to, let's just watch for half an hour so that you can see what's walking in and walking out. Cause like we went in and did our thing and then we left. And I mean, the demographic walking into these stores is definitely over 50. <laughs> It's big. I mean, it's, uh, I would say it's their number one demographic walking in the stores. So it's, and it's the market that 
that I'm, you know, I'm interested in, in talking to and, and, and um, merchandise for that market and um, a different kind of shopping experience as opposed to a head shop. Whereas, you know, someone that say my age or older might not feel so comfortable with that, you know, um, just kind of a more different type of experience as, you know, more personal. I don't like head shop. I hate head shops. I absolutely hate them. I can't stand them. You have to walk into one and not be talked down to. So exactly. And I mean, like it's it's just and I mean when I worked for a company, um, a, a previous company that I worked for, um, it was kind of funny. We we did medical prescriptions, but we also had a retail um angle to it as well. And people my age would walk in and go, Oh, I'm so relieved to see you, you know, like it's, you, you're not, you know, 12 with a band t-shirt and, you know, like, you know what I mean? Like, because I, I was older, you know, um, and, and that's the thing. I think this generation, boomers and seniors, uh, they, they need to hear it from someone kind of their own age and generation. Demographic. Yeah, they For do. Sure. And Everybody so that was my bus that was my business plan right from the get go was to target like to, to target that demographic. Yes, so and that's what I've done and it's been really fun. Um I have like a t shirt line and it's called Green is the New Gray. It's um you know, these older couple in bed using their C B D lube and <laughs> You know that kind of stuff, and <laughs> I one hundred percent have CBD tools. Right. <laughs> so you know what I mean. Like it's it's more a lot of it is just trying to make that demographic comfortable with all of it. So that makes sense. Oh, want me to introduce? Oh, are we are we going to the Yes, gas face. We need to do the gas face. Please introduce. I'm going to introduce the gas face. So, ladies, back in the day, I'm going to give you a little history lesson because I think it's important. Back in the day, in the 80s, there was a rap group called Third Base. They were actually the first white rap group, like before the Beastie Boys, before Vanilla Ice, Marky Mark, all that bullshit. Third Base, they were signed to Def Jam. And uh, they were very dope. And Prime Minister Pete Nice and NC Search. And they had a song called The Gas Things, which basically anything that's wrong, they're like, why would you do that? It gets the gas things. Like, blah, 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 blah. gas things, right? So we decided to bring it back, paying homage to the classics and the old school of the hip hop, because that's. that's our foundation, right? So um, we're doing a gas base of the week every week, and every week one of us picks what the gas base of the week is going to be. So this week, McGlock picks the yeah. gas base of the week. I, th I think I had the last the last, week, the last one. Too. I did the last one, but I just like, I like, yeah, he slammed us with that one. Yeah, like, this is okay. like, oh, that's dope, or oh, that's no. Pardon me? Is gas face, oh, that's dope, or oh, that's no? No. No, no. no. oh, that's no, like the ultimate no. Like, what are you doing? Oh, okay. But gas face, gas face of the week, I mean, I forget on which day, but last, like this week, it was stupid. We got fucked in the presidential debate, which had Joe Biden. And the motherfucking like Trump literally just at each other's throats. Like, what the what is going on here? Like, it's just entertainment. At this point. It's just what are we doing? Okay, that's the guy. Is anybody actually trying to make that country better? I think we should. Yeah, they both get the gas. They, yeah, they both get the gas. Well, imagine okay, your like country, this, you have a you racist. Nobody looking to. <laughs> Don't be looking to make the country better than it was before. It's just a big fucking joke at this point. Like, I think that we pretty much have established that America uh, 
<laughs> is right through the thinking, you know? Like, the power moved. The, yeah. You know how they always say the power moves west? Power the power shifted. And now it's like, you know, right? So I don't think, like, like this election is going to happen, but I don't think it's going to be anything spectacular. Like, I think the people who started to speak, and I think that that's what it's going to be like, especially if you go into the second wave, like, like forget about it. It's going to be a thing, man. Dude, I think you need a, you need a whole new party in that country, bro. <laughs> and I think it's interesting that a lot of people are pro Biden, but Biden's not like it's just like, like voting he's, for he's slightly better than Trump, but he's really do research on Biden, he's not that good. So it's like mm, it's, it's like the lesser of two people. Yeah, exactly. Like exactly. Yeah, no, that's, no, I get that. See to me oh, to me uh, the devil's a devil, right? Like at that level of politics, like I don't think any one of them is any better than the other. In my personal opinion, maybe that's a very, you know, revolutionary ideal, but that's how I feel. I feel like you're not going to get a good president. Like, there's no such thing as a good president, or like a good prime minister. Like the devil is a devil. Is a devil. I agree with that, but like, at least like be classy. Right, you yeah. have some decorum. Like, at the debate, I didn't watch the debate, but I heard that Trump was making like low blows to Biden about like his family, like the deaths in his family, and like his son's addiction. And I'm just like, yeah, it was very so like, it's it's like nothing, you're trash, bro. It's yeah, nothing trash. about like bettering the country. And that's what it's supposed to be there for. It's supposed to be, you know, like answer the shit to the best of your abilities to like make it seem like you actually. Like this, this dude literally went at his throat and started punching him in the face. This is a blue, right? Verbally assaulting this dude. So, yeah, this is how like, Trump is now. He, he always does that. He verbally he assaulted the man that <laughs> Out of throat. Simpsons thing of old men what, shouting at Cloud. Like, it was it, completely random and just two, like, just old dudes yelling at each other. There was nothing redeemed <laughs> by watching that at all. Like, uh, yeah, it was. It was anyway, like anyway, watching your two drunk uncles fight over the last drumstick, right? Yeah. Like, fuck. <laughs> and yeah. like, it's funny, but it's not funny, right? Like, yeah. it's because it's really not funny. But I mean, what are you going to do other than laugh at this point? Because they're in so deep. Like, how, how do you get out of this position where you're cho choosing from, like, well, like in South Park, from the, what is it, the giant douche and the turd sandwich? Right? Like, yeah, I know. I remember that episode. But here's the thing, and it goes back to this, you know, the Black Lives Matter movement. It goes back to everything. You can say whatever you want to say. You can say whatever you want to say in a room full of 10 people. But unless you're taking more militant action, the, the, you know, the transfer of power is not going to change. So, we can, we've, been, we've been singing and chanting and talking and discussing and whatever for, you know, hundreds of years on the same issues we're struggling with now. So, like, what is the next level? Like, what is the next step? Because people are not willing to put their mouth, their mind where their mouth is. And it's like, yeah, like, you have an Instagram, you're posting this, you're posting that. But what are you doing on a regular basis to create actual change? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and what what are the next steps? How how do you advise others? Like, what what do you do? And I think like I th that's that's the one thing that I would like to see is like, you know, like tell me what what the steps are. What what I'm ready to act. What am I doing? I don't know. That's interesting because I actually made a video to explain to white people how to be allies without oppressing. Black people, but like in general, like being an ally to any kind of oppressed group, it doesn't have to be just to Black Lives Matter, you know, Indigenous rights, Indigenous people, um, you know, the LGBTQ movement, like just, you know, be open to even asking that question. Like, what can I do without oppressing you to help you? Because, like, a lot of times people think allies should be helping, but then you're actually overshadowing the people and their voice. So, asking that specific question of how to be a proper ally is the first step. The reality is that a majority of people are not willing to actually be an ally. Do you know what I mean? They're, they're looking to be part of the movement to have clout. They're looking to be part of the movement to say they're a part of something. 
but when it really comes down to it, they're not asking the right questions like how they how they can balance the Yeah. I have a question. I just want to know. Would and this is for everybody, would you consider yourself pro revolution? Yes. 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 Oh, I gotta say, if I lived in the States right now, uh uh <laughs> I don't know. I think we're going to see some type of an uprising after this election, no matter which way it goes. A full-on revolution? We'll see. I don't know. Um, but I don't know. I'm waking up these days pretty happy I'm Canadian. I don't know about anybody else right now. <laughs> Seriously, yeah. Blessed. We're blessed. We're blessed. Feeling very blessed. Um, there's a lot of tension there. There's a lot. I mean, it's... There's a lot of tension in the States, but there's actually just as much tension in Canada. The difference is that it's not overt like it is in the States. So I think the state is that a lot, of people, a lot of people make the assumption that, you know, America is this, you know, having this race war and Canada is just this peaceful little place on the other side. And that's absolutely not the case at all. I would argue that the institutional racism is equally as bad as the US. Um, you know, our culture is different, and that's why, you know, the racism and all that man kind of manifests in a different way, but it's equally as bad. So what I'm trying to say is that I'd love to see, like, a revolution here as well, and, like, not just for Black people, like, oh, yeah. people as well are just as oppressed. So I think that that really needs to happen in Canada as well. I think it should. It, I was, it, should it needs to happen all over the world. Exactly. It really, I was just going to say that no, no revolution will work if it's not Global, right? Well, I it needs to be global. It needs to be like a unified front, like against the man. Like Mariah said, it's not. I learned this when I was younger. I used to think it was all about race. I was raised very, it's very indigenous and very black. I didn't have a lot of, I didn't have a lot, a lot, a lot of Caucasian influence in my life when I was younger. So I was raised around a lot of hate, you know, and like so. Being young, I just I thought that that's what it was, right? So that's you know what I mean. So that's what I did, you know. But as I got older, I, I music blessed me. I was able to travel a lot, so I was able to meet a lot of people in a lot of different places, a lot of different walks. Like a lot of promoters aren't black or indigenous, like promoters who book shows and like that kind of stuff, you know. So as I got older, and I realized that it's way more of a class war than it is a race war, right? Like we're in a class war. When it's us versus them, it's like this class war. There's like the two, three percent that are like gobbling up everything, and then the rest of us are like scraping for crumbs down here. You know what I mean? Mm. And everybody's like a minority. Blacks are minorities, natives are minorities, women's are women are minorities. I'm obese. I'm a I'm a minority. You know what I mean? Like there's just so many minorities at like it, it, it's you know we're minorities, but we make up a the majority. And yeah, but we, but, we, but we don't have any power. And that's the, what's the crazy thing is, <coughs> is that they make it seem like we do have the power, like, in instances, like, I know I, voice. I know, I know, I know, I know, no, 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 I know I spoke on it, like, last week, um, the whole, like, attorney general in Kentucky, like, he's, like, he's black, like, he's a black Republican. So, like, I mean, it's a, definitely a, I feel like a class thing because I mean, he looked at the situation that like the police had the right to be there, you know, when it's like they got, they had the wrong address and that they killed somebody and that it was okay, you know, and just gave a settlement to the family and didn't actually go after the police force that made the wrong call. That goes like, back to what I you said. You know what I mean? It's like it's, they're pr he's protect You're like he, he's protecting it. Mm -hmm. Like he's protecting the legal system, saying that like we we fucked up, but we're not gonna destroy the system. Huh. Saying that it needs to change. But that's who pays his bills. That's who that's who put dinner on the table for his children. That's that's who you know mm -hmm. tells him he's a good boy and you know praises him and all that. So. I'm not saying I agree with that shit, but like I understand like why he, he just made it seem like it. he's they needed to sweep it under the rug like another like, I don't know. Like, but the power I think is within us. 
if we're going to put our power in someone else to speak for us, then you have to believe in yourself first. Then a lot of these people that are on top, they know about the laws of energy and all that stuff, but they're using it for their own use. You can use it for whatever the hell you want. If you're powerful to it and you believe in it, it can work for you. <laughs> the problem is no one's in a united front on that. If we all were like, no, tomorrow, no, I'm telling you, man, the biggest thing I think is take your dollar out of businesses. Watch where you keep your money. But also yes. start believing in your power. Take, like meditation is a powerful thing. They know these things. That's why there's so much fucking garbage music and garbage commercials every second because they're trying to distract us. That's why, why you think even with this COVID stuff, I don't know, all the theories sound like that make sense to me, but keeping people apart so we don't talk to each other. If you're two meters from a stranger, you're probably not going to shout your conversation that you might strike up with him if you're right beside him in the line at the grocery store. Because you start thinking and we feed on thoughts and energy grows and energy expands. And if we all start waking the hell up, which everybody is, they're like, everything's being exposed this year. So all their bullshit is being exposed. So they're just clawing now, desperate for distractions because all their shit is coming up. Everyone's shit. Even in my own personal life, I have friends where, where shit's coming up and I'm dropping people and like, you know, moving on. Like every, nobody can hide. With all this COVID, we, we're all on an equal playing field now. Like everyone's at square one. Even like Erica Badu's doing a show. You're doing a show right now. Like, you know what I mean? Like we're all using the exact same access. We have the exact same access to the exact same people on earth. Yeah. So no one's up here. We're all famous or not. We're all at the same level now. So, you know, what's going to happen? It's really up to us. It's interesting you say that because I, I how when you say we're all on the, on the same playing field, I was watching, um, this is probably the unpopular opinion in the room, but I don't care. I'm gonna say it anyway. I've been I've been following Machine Gun Kelly because I really like his new release. Like I like it. It's not even rap music. Like it's not rap at all. It's like a punk pop record. It's not. There's no rap on it. And uh, but I've been following that like how he's doing it, and he's literally since COVID started done everything with his phone from his house. Including the video that he did, he's dating what's her face, and freaking transforming Megan Fox. And they like, she's in the video, and he filmed the whole video in his house, and he's like doing all these things from his house. Like, everything is like from the spot. Everything's like real grassroots from the spot with his phone. And right now, as we speak, he just fucking premiered number one on Billboard 200 from his house with his fucking iPhone. It's something that's true. Me, man, I still like his earlier shit more. I'm yeah. sorry, like chip off the block. I, 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 I guess I being an artist and being older, I appreciate, I appreciate. Dude, I'm not going to machine gun Kelly production. Like I'm going to like, if I'm going like punk rock and shit like that. Did you listen to it? No, because I don't go to. It, but then, like, but now remember last week you're saying you can't really talk about Tori if you didn't listen to the album. Kind of the same thing, right? Can't really be like a double standard, right? Music is music. If you listen to it, I mean, maybe I'll throw it on when I'm on my way to work. Dude, I'm, I'm telling you, don't listen to it like expecting to hear the Machine Gun Valley rapid bar spitter or whatever. The well, what is he gonna bring to the table Dude, that I, I'm legit, not gonna wanna... legit? Adult punk rock. Okay. You know what? I don't know much about him, but all I know is that he killed Eminem in that bit. I, if you want to know how dope he is, see him live. He's killing it. If you watch him live, that's why you know that he's why he's as famous as he is. He's got one of the best live shows I've ever seen. I think Eminem's sick, but he killed him in that. You know what? Do you guys want to talk about? Am I even talking about the right back? Wasn't it him who like murdered freaking yeah. Eminem in a disc? Yeah, I, I think he won that. I think he won that battle too. That's definitely another unpopular. And Eminem came back with some. I think he's. A, I, I, I don't think he. I don't think he won, but I think he's one of the better ones that did it. I'll tell you why against I Eminem. I'll tell you why I think he won. Eminem, like strictly from a battle standpoint, right? And it's strictly from a battle standpoint. And I say this having done battle rap for many years, right? Strictly from a battle standpoint, it's not the same as writing a rap or like or or doing a song or whatever. Eminem definitely did a better song. Than MGK did. Okay. But it was more generic. Like it, it could have been about anything. Yeah. 
Okay. MGK, he from was a like, that standpoint was like, yo, shot shot like, after like, shot at the end of the day. Now it's battle. Definitely. So, okay. so, so from a competition standpoint, it's not like, it's not even a question. Right. From a song standpoint, it's a different conversation. Who's a better rapper? Definitely Eminem. But who won the battle? But that's, but that's what I'm saying. Like, I, I feel, that's what I feel like MGK gave the best. Like, out of anybody that went at him and then M came back with the fucking beat and like where their career is at, you know? I don't MG, MGK is Eminem like, having trouble with fucking he's losing artists and yeah. fucking MGK is fucking number one on Billboard 200. <laughs> <laughs> if you really want to have a conversation, like he's kind of winning in the long run. I'm just saying. Yeah. You know? I mean, it's hard to even take that battle like seriously oh because when they're both on the same label yeah when they're both see, the same my, my point was that's like, where i i don't really care about the battle i just like i in the spirit of of Sela saying everybody is on the same playing field yeah he didn't he didn't use all the bells and whistles he didn't use his big budget from his label he didn't There's do any of that it was him and his cell phone on the internet any of us can do that that's what we're doing right now True. You know what I mean? And that to me is yeah, impressive. Yeah. Right? By any means, by any means using your platform. Because a lot of fucking artists lost yeah. their sh- like lost a lot of fucking money with this COVID thing, right? Because people couldn't tour. You don't tour, you don't make money. Yeah. You know? And like that's that's like the main thing. Most artists, like you only get so far. If you can't tour, you're not making any money. Like I speak for myself, I make pretty good fucking music. My music is pretty good. Like I'm not saying it's the big best or whatever. I'm just saying I make good music, but I can't tour. I can't tour even if it wasn't COVID. I can't tour because of my back, and my knees, and everything, and like my health problems. Like I can't. Like picture me on stage for a half an hour right now performing. Like, this is my life right now. So I'm not making any money because I'm not able to perform. It's just the facts, right? So now we're at artists are trying to figure out how to make money. Without fucking having to do shows, you're gonna see record releases streamed online. That's what you're gonna see. My new album, when I do the release party, is gonna be online. It's gonna be some next level theatrical shit. Like, like in my head, I already see it because I know you gotta make people pay money to watch your record release on the internet. Yeah. You can't just stand in front of your fucking phone and and rap or sing, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. So I think we're going to be in this a little longer than. That's a good performance. How long? How much longer do you think we'll be in this? Just to get everyone's opinion, how much longer do you think we'll be in this? It's Eleven o'clock. My no, no, I mean, no, I mean the pandemic. She meant the pandemic. Oh, <laughs> how high are they? I knew you meant the pandemic. My higher ass was like right. that time. So like, right, 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 right. Pandemic. How long? Like no, how long? Bro. Don't worry about them. I'm what you mean. Right? No, I don't care about that. Yeah. I'm just saying, like, how long do you think we'll be in this? That's like, I, I'm thinking at least probably another eight months to 12 months. I, think, I, I, I have a lot of opinions about it, you know? But I, I, I'm not a big fan of the scare tactics, really, right? And, and I like... I, it makes me ask a lot of questions. Like, why is my son allowed to be in school, but I'm you're suggesting I can't have anybody in my house? Yes. I can't have my friends and family come to my home, but I can send my son to school with like three thousand kids. I don't know, like what's going on at their houses or. But I would argue that, that like, doesn't mean it's not as bad as they say it is. I would argue that they're just not doing the right thing yeah. because they're trying. Like you know, like I. I, I would say that it's it it is it's significant, but I think that it means that they're just doing the wrong thing by having the kids in school. Yeah. Well, I, I try to fight it. I, I'm not with my son's mom anymore, and I'm, I'm going to put her under the bus on on a podcast. But I I really tried for months, like before school went back in. I was like, I don't think this should do this. Like, it's not time. It's not time. She has full custody, so she decided to do it. So that's what happened. But yeah. uh, 
that's my a person was like, I'm not with it. Like I would have paid for homeschool and they were in going back to school. Well, my, my daughter's in school because she was absolutely desperate for human contact. Like mm-hmm. at, at that young age, it, it's so difficult. And that's why you, there were so many articles being released uh, by children's hospitals and stuff like that, advocating to return children to school because of the social aspect, because of the ramifications on their mental health. But now, like, I don't know. I ask myself every single day, am I doing the right thing by sending her? And the answer is, I don't know. And I will never know. And, you know, like. See, for me, it's like, we don't know. And that's part of it. Like, part of me is like, okay, so there's a pandemic out there. I like protect my son. And like, myself personally, the pandemic, pandemic doesn't change my social life. Like, I'm not a very social person. I basically live in the studio, right? I'm constantly like creating art. Like that's what I do, you know? So the pandemic didn't change that. I'm not around massive amounts of people. Like I don't really go out like that anyway. <coughs> so it didn't really change anything for me from that, from that context. But it definitely has me concerned about economic all of the stuff. The people in general. You know? And economic stuff. I mean, it's only right. natural, you know. You're a musician. You need to tour. You need to an audience. Um, restaurants need patrons, customers. You know, it's it's sad to see um, certain industries really taking it more so than others. You know. Yeah. I just think it's You're smart for online. online. Like, exactly. You can bring your kids to school because social thing is thing. Like, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. It just makes me think. Is it a thing <coughs> to interact with? Why was my plane to Vancouver? There was no in-between seating because it was shoulder to shoulder. My flight was packed. Like, so if there's a real big problem, then why are the big companies okay to do whatever the fuck they want? But small businesses are suffering. And, like, you can go to the mall with your friend, but you can't go hang with her on the bench in the park. Like, does it make it make sense? Does it make it yeah. scrambled all over the place? Yeah, it is. There's yeah. criticism for the Ontario government at the beginning, now that wave two is starting, about exactly that contradictory rules and information that's being sent to P or that's being like communicated around and stuff. So absolutely. I, I think that you know we're we're all none of us know exactly what to do but i think we should probably be more consistent in what we tell people to do mm-hmm. <laughs> and yeah. what we are ourselves doing yeah. yes it's definitely it's definitely like it's definitely confusing and like i mean i'm again the you know the way that i view things right like it's a propaganda machine too right like we don't they're, they're, we're only getting what they're feeding us like we don't actually know like i'm not I don't live with somebody that like has for COVID or like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't really know, you know what I mean? I don't really know like the specs that are online or like whatever feed it is that I follow to get information. It's like, it's all on the internet. I don't really know what I'm given. I don't know actually, you know? Mm-hmm. It's funny that you say that it's a propaganda thing because That's why there's so many people love it. I mean, you say with the second wave of- <laughs> Men. There's no toilet paper. I can't get, like, or sorry, I can't get paper towels. Can't get it. Did you think I we would have learned three the first time? For, three, <laughs> for the last three days, I've been going to the grocery store to try and get paper towel, and I can't get it. I'm like, fuck. It's like, are we really doing this again? <laughs> well, okay. like, but I- yeah, I guess there was a thousand cases in uh, Quebec today, I heard. A thousand? A thousand in Quebec? I don't know. Yeah, that is, that is I just, the numbers are just too hilarious to me. I don't know. Like, I honestly only wear a mask for the comfort of people on the street and, seriously, to pop style. I have all different kinds. For me, I've always want to cover my face without freaking people out. So now I can just do it. It's, it's an opportunity. Fashion for me. It's the only reason I'm into it. I Yeah, I mean... I wear it, you know, out of respect for others, out of, you know, um, absolutely, you know. Um, Are we all going to eventually get it? There's probably, I don't know, 
it's 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 very very bizarre the way it all happened in my books but anyways it's just you know well i think everybody ha has handled it differently and it's very personal you know you have your conspiracy theorists and then you have your people who have you know really like mental health uh you know you we've had everyone has handled it differently it's very personal and i've found I, I remember the first couple of weeks on facebook i was like oh my gosh like i can't you know and i finally just realized that you know what everyone is handling it differently yeah. um yeah. and it's very personal you know whether it's affecting your mental health your um uh, economics or what what have you you know um, and I think everyone just has to kind of understand because, but, but I can tell you, um, it did one thing as we were talking about earlier about Facebook is I think that, um, you're going to see social media not be so, I think it kind of took the bloom off the rose of social media. It definitely <laughs> did. I think everyone was overexposed. Yeah. Um, so I think that that. You know, that's that's a big part because I, I hear you on the Facebook thing. I hear you on that. Um, that's, yeah. But, you know, yeah, every, like, everyone's handled it differently, though. For me, I know, I know for me, the first round was real hard. But I think it's hard on people depending on what they're going through. Like, everybody's going through something different in life, right? So, yeah. some was, people just happen to be really in the mud. When it when it popped off, you know what I mean, and then it just made it ridiculously hard. For them, you know what I mean? Because like, they were already in the mud. Like if you're already in the mud and you get a pandemic thrown at you, like that's gonna be hard on you. You know? But some people were thriving, or some people were getting into stuff that was already helping them to be able to thrive. Some of the people were already online, so it didn't really change anything for them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it really depends on what you were going through and what you were into before before it happened you know what mm. I mean? so like i know like for like myself like the first time that it happened i was in a way worse place than i am now like mentally you know like i was really really not in a good place the first wave was not good at all like i never want to do that again and uh i just think it has a lot to do with like your circumstance and, like what's going on which is why it's so personal it is it's so personal and so now i kind of just let you know i listen to the, the conspiracy theorists and i listen to the you know what i mean because every that's just their way of hand that's just everybody's way of handling it i guess you know um everyone has their own opinions and their own you know but yeah, it's, it's been, a, it's, it's, I, I, I said to someone the other day, I can't imagine when we Christmas morning last year that we would have ever seen this coming. Like, you know, to think that by March we were basically completely, you know. Well, that is interesting you mentioned Christmas. What does Christmas for you look like? Really? No, no, but just thinking like, we didn't see it coming then, you know, like everything, you know, we had the year ahead and the new year and it's just like, it just kind of just came out of nowhere. It was just like, wow. Like it was just like, whoa. Yeah. I think you were the last person that I met before shutdown. <laughs> really? Seriously. Yeah. Yes. We, we did an event together. Mm -hmm. Um, Absolutely. That was one of, and that was in February. That was the last you know, we had the whole year ahead. Everyone was excited and yeah. Wow. Yeah. It was a real shock. Seeing you under these circumstances. Well, and our industry is so social and so much about panels and events and, you know, having gatherings and, you know, it's sharing joints. <laughs> yeah. A lot of that moved online now. Yeah, everything pretty much. I mean, I've had a couple of, I do, you know, some, I've had some face to face meetings with just small, you know, a couple people, but otherwise, no, I've been pretty much doing the old Zoom meeting. 
I have, Zoom. Zoom's making a lot of money, and it's not the it's not the best platform either. What do you think? <laughs> no. Even um, though we're using it, I'm still not a fan. We're still gonna bash it. I'm bashing it. I'm a rebel. Uh, the Microsoft one is um, what is it called? Microsoft Teams. Microsoft Teams is a little bit more stable. Maybe we should make the points this week to look into it. Yeah, and you don't get strangers that pop in either um, on Microsoft Teams. I was on a Zoom that had a, had a somebody pop in. Yeah, were they? I have to know. No, but they weren't supposed to be there, and it was a pair. It was apparent. We haven't had that happen yet. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but, but you know what I mean. Like Microsoft Teams, that doesn't happen. So that that one might you might want to check that one out. That platform. Who are you? What are you doing here? <laughs> oh, but there was some like apparently like. Nasty stuff happening, from what I understand. Oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> no, no, this one wasn't, but um, he was playing a guitar. I mean, <laughs> oh, that's entertaining. Yeah, but no, he was always about drinking. Like it was not. Yeah, and this was a pretty professional. <laughs> but now significantly less professional. <laughs> but he did have his clothes on, so yes. So that's that. Gotta look on the bright side. <laughs> bright side of things. <laughs> but yeah, Microsoft Teams, check that one out. That might work better yeah, for you. My, we we literally every week we have trouble with Zoom. Like we're like it's, it's becoming a thing. Yeah, the sound is kind of weird sometimes. Like <laughs> we're uh, nearly perfect, far from perfect. We're imperfectly perfect. Hey. <laughs> but uh. I have a. Well, I have my a battery's question. getting low. I have, so. I have a serious question. Okay, so it's serious. Uh oh, are you still yet? Can we order? Yeah, well, that's what we're talking about right now. <laughs> <laughs> I have a serious question too. I no, I have a serious question. Too. You're getting stoned. I'm serious. Go ahead. Order. Oh, I mean, like I, I'm definitely like, yo, know, we need to get to. Okay. We got to wait. We got food on the way in. I know. I need to get food on the way in. Yeah, you're kind of realizing. But I have. I now question what she did. I'm just saying that's all I could think about for like two minutes. Don't, so I just want to share with you. That's bad. Right. Okay, back right. to stunts. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 A little girl that's going to school um and i wanted to ask you how like how are you able to separate being like being a good mom and like still like cropping down mass amounts of like plants and like is does she know like uh, like in the line of work that you do and is she like are you like doing a good job of like showing her the lines or is, are you gonna wait for that so that happens. So, so it's like as you can see, a lot of people have asked me this question, um, including people like parents of kids that she goes to school with, because there was an article written in the local newspaper about me. So it's been controversial. Um, my personal belief on it is I, I grew up on a farm. I am a farmer and I am a farmer's farmer's daughter and like generate anyway. So I have tremendous appreciation for the difficulty and the challenge inherent in growing anything. I appreciate all plants, regardless of what we make of them at the end, because really that is like beholden on us. Um, so when it comes to what I tell my daughter and how open I am with her, basically the plants in the yard are beautiful. They're beautiful cannabis plants. 
they go from brilliant green all the way to dark purple in the fall. She understands the entire cycle of their life. She knows how to germinate a seed. She's seen me transplant them and pot them up as they get bigger. She knows not to touch them, of course. She knows the safety of all that. And when it comes to storing it, drying it, you know, harvest is a busy time and there's a lot, you know, of cut weed everywhere and stuff like that. And that can be a challenge, but we happen to have the ability to separate that from our main living area. And we have excellent ventilation in our house and I could explain the whole system behind it, but I won't because that is dull. <laughs> um, but but like we, we, we separate anything that could cause her harm and we educate her on anything that can be learned and can be used as an opportunity to grow, right? And <laughs> literally and figuratively, <laughs> right? So, so she knows that I grow cannabis plants and she knows that the result of those cannabis plants will be my medicine. And she also knows that I grow eggplants and the result of those eggplants will probably be the compost heap because what the f do you do with that many eggplants? <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm not kidding. I have a bushel over there. I, I love eggplants. So do I. My husband, uh, honestly, I, I make, I make eggplants. So yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, we just, you know, I, I don't consider myself like a hippie or anything like that. Like I don't have, you know, I wear shoes and things, but, <laughs> but I, I like to teach her about our link to nature. And this is just another tool like any other of my, I shouldn't be eating gummy worms right now. Like any other, other of the plants that grow in my yard, it's, it's a tool to teach her about the wider world out there. School will teach her about reading and math. Well, was teaching her about reading and math and things like that, that frankly, I don't feel qualified to teach because I have learning disabilities and that is not my forte. But what I can share with her is my knowledge of plants, my knowledge of horticulture and my love and passion for it. So who taught you that? I guess I'm assuming your parents, since you said you grew up as a farmer's daughter. Well, yeah, you just kind of absorb it through osmosis for the most part. Um, but my grandfather had an extensive garden. And on the other side of my family, my grandparents also had, were very proficient gardeners. As, as a means of actually having food, right, rather than just a luxury, it was like that. That's they grew it to can it and you know they put it in the basement in the cold storage area like it was it was part of life um in fact one of the strangest things ever was uh, when my grandmother finally moved away from the farm uh that she had lived on for a very long time uh we had to empty her cold storage in the basement and there were preserved jars of tomatoes and peaches and things like that from 1984 and this was in like 2005 so oh, <laughs> so I mean it was it was quite an experience it was a little bit gross but it just goes to show that like you know they they just they held on to everything and everything was used and you know it was and that's what I try to instill that's the the my ethos, I suppose. <laughs> so, are you, do you only grow like do you only grow your your own personal four plants, or do you have a license to grow more than that? No, I only have my four my four that I grow. Yeah. How much do you get up of each plant? Uh, each plant. What's that? How much do you get up of each plant? Do you know I have never weighed what I have taken from a plant no? because I just like I. I look at my jars and I say, okay, this will do me. <laughs> and like, that's enough for me. That, that makes me happy enough. <laughs> I should probably be more, a little more uh, scientific about it and weigh out. I, think I actually think that's pretty cool. I think it's cool that you're like, 
you're not growing for like oh this, like I got this many pounds. You just you grew what you needed, and you and you use what you need, and you keep it moving, man. That's like yeah. so, like that. That's like the I way just, of the I land. I just finished last you know? year's last year's drop. You know what I mean? Was that? Give a lot of weed away. But it's like you're helping people, you know, you're helping yourselves and helping the ones around you. You know, it's yeah, it's like that for us. So, yeah, no, I mean, I I went through my my questions. Yeah, and, and, and they've been and they've been answered. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, mm-hmm. it's we man. It's been almost three hours anyway. We just want to thank you, ladies, for popping in. Yeah. Um, if each one of you wants to get take a second to uh, give people your online information, yes, yeah. um, we can do that, and then we'll say good night. Where can we reach you? And uh, yeah. Yeah. It was nice and it was a pleasure having you guys. It was yeah. awesome. I mean, it was. It, so you want us to give a, us the, like? I mean, like long time smoker, maybe cannabis. I mean, which is a dope ass name, right? name, by the way. I mean, we had some talent up on here tonight. Well, I'll tell you a little bit quickly about what that is. My nickname, of course, Mimi, short for Michelle, is my name, Michelle. But strangely enough, what I want Mimi to represent is you, like the customer and or my person that's and their experience with cannabis. Like I want it to be, you know what I mean? Personal. You know, I want them. Mimi's supposed to represent you. Right. So. But yes, Mimi is short for Michelle. Yes, I follow you all. Definitely hear from us. It could be a rapper's name. I like that. It's nice. I like the name a lot. Okay, yeah. next up. Uh, okay, so I'm on Instagram as the lettuce lady, so the underscore lettuce lady. Um, and basically, I am an advocate and enthusiast and medical user. And I grow and I like to make really funny videos that mostly only I laugh at. Awesome. Awesome. Oh, quickly, I'm at Mimi Cannabis on Instagram. I'm uh, at uh, www.mimicannabis.com, my online store. I help people get access to medical cannabis. I do consulting, whatever. Um, LinkedIn under uh, Michelle Parada. Awesome, awesome. And then we have Sava. Sava. You can find me. Sorry. Oh my god, you guys! I'm so cheap. I literally just rolled the joint, walked away, and it's disappeared in my house. So I was just <laughs> can't find it. Can't find it. So, anyways, <laughs> rolled it in front of you. Can't find it. So anyways, uh, my link on IG is Sela underscore Genesis, that's S-E-L-A-H underscore G-E-N-E-S-I-S. I'm mostly active on there, so that's what you can find me. All right. We are the Smokers Club. Oh. Yeah, well, yeah. no, we, we're forgetting. I'm just cutting her off. You, you, you're forgetting. We so also we, had Accenture, who's not with us. We oh. have to give a big shout out to her. To Accenture, yeah, catch her at Accenture Sam on <coughs> Instagram, but it's X. With an X. <coughs> yeah, with an X. <coughs> Instead of a C. Accenture. Mm-hmm. So Accenture. She's, she's on Spotify. She's on YouTube. She's, she's everywhere. You can catch her everywhere. Just want to thank all the ladies yeah. again. And that, then we have a little you know, in, in studio. We have studio. Right. Thank you for having us. Thank you Thank so you much. Guys. This is a blast. Yeah, you, know, nice my yep. you know, Jenna, you. you guys are all amazing. Mariah. Mariah Poetry on Instagram. All one word. Cool. That was nice and short. Get out! I was expecting yeah. more. She just cut me off. <laughs> Get out! Okay, I right, we are out. the big boy. You know, like, we thank you away. very much for coming. It was such an awesome thing. I'm so blessed. I feel so blessed to have been able to do this with you. We are the Smokers Club. Smokers Club. T H E S M O K E R Z K L U B B. Smokers Club everywhere. Don't fuck on it up. social media. Don't fuck it up. Don't fuck it up. Don't fuck it up. <laughs> Smoke loud. 
Talk louder. Yeah. Only good. Good day. night. Good night, guys. Good night. Good night. That's Love awesome. Up until next time. Junior, but say if you no cough, you no get off. This year we don't make a cough.